presents the premiere of Robin Rentals pregame show. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Bright House Network's exclusive coverage of the high school football game of the week. Somebody's talking about this game. I don't know why. No big deal, really. Really, it's only the number one quarterback in the state of California versus uh, in his team versus the all-time winningest high school in the state of California. Big deal, right? Obviously, we're joking. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Matt Alvarez, Brian Adams, I'm Vance Palm. And finally, we're able to grab him, and it wasn't easy. Our proud new father, Zach Ewan of the Bakersfield Californian. Above all the big things happening this weekend in your life as the high school beat writer, congratulations. Proud Papa, how is your daughter? She's very well, I appreciate it, Vance. Uh, costing us sleep, but I, I wouldn't miss this one. You're not, your eyes aren't bloodshot, you're all right. <laughs> we know you gotta get up there, so let's get to the chase here. Uh, this football game is probably gonna live up to the hype. The first game, very windy, they ran into some trouble BHS, but tonight I think everybody's ready to go. Yeah, I think so, the weather's great. It's football weather. Uh, teams felt each other out a few weeks ago. We have, uh, shoot, Balanced offense on either side, great defenses on either side, so we should be ready to roll. I'd be remiss if I just didn't come right out and talk about Cody Kessler. Uh, you've been covering him for a while now. You've written a lot of stories about him, his family, Sean Johnson living with him. He's going to SC, named today as the top quarterback in the state, uh, up for an All-American Player of the Year for the Army Bowl. Give us your, uh, your Zach Ewing take on Cody Kessler. Bar none, best high school quarterback I've ever seen. Uh, most amazing thing he can do is move, get out of the pocket, and throw on the run. And that's what separates him from everybody else because you can get pressure on him, which Bakersfield will tonight, and he will still make plays. If you're Coach Gola, you've had a chance to at least see Liberty pull off a stunner. Did, did Coach Gola pull anything out of that? What do you think BHS is going to be able to do tonight? I'm curious to see if they're less aggressive than they were in October. They, they blitzed several times, and they, and they got Cody four or five times in that game, but they also gave up the three big plays that cost him the game. So Liberty beat Centennial by playing back by forcing him to play the short game. Uh, is, is that gonna be something Gola does? That's not really his style on defense. So that'll be interesting to see if he wants to go that route. You're getting head nods from our captain. Well, um, there's another game here in Bakersfield, believe it or not, and it's the vaunted Steve Dem and Tehachapi Warriors coming down to play uh, a record-breaking season runner of Jalen Sykes and a runaway defensive player of the year, Grant Campbell. What's your thoughts on Tehachapi Garces? What a matchup. Uh, Garces won the season opener 35 to six. I promise you this one will be closer. Tachapi always plays his best ball in November and December, but I don't, 29 points is an awful lot to make up, and Garza is so explosive. I think they pull away in the second half. Last week we covered Ridgeview. Probably could have beaten Matt Whitney by 60. Got a little relaxed, a little unfocused. What a very talented, deep team, but boy, do they have their work cut out for them tonight, Ridgeview. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's um, it, Porterville has just been phenomenal all year. You look at their scores, 60 to 2. They did beat Highland by 60 last week, so there you go. I mean, uh, to me, those are the two most talented teams in Division Three. Winner of that game is the favorite next week. It's been a Cinderella story for Independence. You've covered it deeply with Tyler's really serious injury and everything that we've kind of encompassed around that. Can Independence pull off another big victory tonight? Uh, sure they can. I mean, Kingsburg has not played a team right. from a league that good, probably has only played one or two teams that good all year. Now, that said, Kingsburg's very good. Um, you know, you look at computer rankings and those sort of things, they all love Kingsburg. There's a reason for that. They rolled through Division Four last year. They're kind of the wild card in Division Three, and they've got a great home field advantage. 30 more seconds with you, Zach. Uh, this season's been a, a crazy season for us to call. We've seen some crazy things happen. One indelible moment above any others that stand out in your mind? You know, I wasn't at Liberty for the game, but you have to think that touchdown pass from Cody Renz to Carson Moyer, scrambling back across to the right side of the field and then throwing across to the left, and Moyer is just waiting for the ball. I mean. Does it get any better than that with Centennial talking about state bowl rankings and national rankings and all these things and it all goes poof in that four second moment. Uh, th th that's really the moment now. Centennial or Bakersfield plays well in the next two minutes, they could, or next two weeks, excuse me, they could certainly surpass that. We were there, we saw that, and that is the most indelible moment for sure. All right, last question in the paper. You went to print last night with your story, a 28-27 victory tonight for BHS after about 18 to 20 hours. What's your gut tell you now? I actually said 28-27 Centennial. Oh, sorry, and sorry, I, right. Yeah, and I, I think I'm going to stick with it. I try to give it to you, man. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to stick with it. Both teams are so talented, it wouldn't surprise me to see either way. Uh, but, but I just don't see Cody letting this team lose when it comes down to it. This will be the first time you leave a semifinal Valley Championship game with this much pressure and go home 
to possibly no sleep tonight. Congratulations on the new birth, and thank you for everything you do for high school sports here. Zach, have a great night. Hey, you too, Vance. See you, buddy. Beat it. Get up there and do it. Matt Alvarez, we're going to get back to you in just a moment. You'll be covering Centennial tonight in your pregame. Well, Cap, you heard Zach Ewing, and he's deep in the trenches when it comes to covering these teams. Your BHS drillers, can they do it? Can they put it together tonight, Cap? Well, Vance, they definitely can, but what they have to do is take care of the ball. I think they have to control the clock. I don't think they want to get into an up-and-down scoring race with the Centennial. They want to grind that clock out, use Burrell's legs, use the running backs and the Cedars and, guy and company, and then be uh, accurate with the passing. We talked about that a few weeks ago. They had to be accurate with the passing, not throw for a lot of yards, but be accurate, have a high efficiency rating on that passing. Now, defensively, the quest is going to be again. He brought it up. We talked about it last week. Liberty played that cover two umbrella, forced everything underneath. The drillers are very aggressive defensively. They felt they had a cornerback that didn't play that week who knows the system a little bit better. So I expect the goal to be a little bit aggressive, but I think he has to pick and choose his spots. If he does it right and calculates it properly, he could stifle the Centennial offense. Our captain, Brian Adams, is going to have a lot of leeway tonight. There are not many people allowed to get through these CIF barriers, and Brian's going to have a lot of grass to roam tonight. Can't wait for your call down on the grass. Hey, I like what you're wearing. I like your outfit. You look good. Everything looks good about you tonight, Matt. Well, your Centennial Golden Hawks, I say you because you cover the home team in our pregame. Is it all about Cody? You know, Cody has the weapons and Tim Martinez. He has Sean Johnson. He's got all the weapons he needs to come out with a win tonight. And you know, as Centennial players walk in front of our shot there, and if they can if they can keep up the big plays that they had the first time they played BHS, remember Vance, three, three of the four touchdowns they scored when they played BHS the first time were from 75 yards or more. So if BHS can limit those big plays by Centennial, then Centennial may have a tough time, but if they give the ball to Sean Johnson and keep a lot of the pressure off Cody Kessler, Centennial could, uh, could run up the score tonight. For Matt Alvarez and Brian Adams, I am Vance Palm. Thank you for being here for the CIF Division I semifinals between the host Centennial Gold Ho Golden Hawks and the Bakersfield High School Drillers. Absolutely jam-packed in here at 5.15 tonight, so it's going to be a fun one. Glad you're with us. Back in a moment with the kickoff exclusively on Bright House Network's Bakersfield. Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road, or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rentals. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970 with Dan Patrick in the morning and Jim Rome 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports, it's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. is on Friday Football Extra. And it's a complete football package on Sunday night after the NFL. FFX Sunday Night Edition. All the scores, all the highlights, all the stories from the gridiron. Coverage of your favorite school, plus the FFX Game of the Week, Friday Football Extra. FFX, the Sunday Night Edition, only on 17 News after Sunday Night Football. Local football action, get in the game. Football season's here and I've been waiting all year Head high, no looking back No fear, here we go Bright House Network's High School Football Game of the Week. 
Sponsored by Premier Equipment Rentals, Audio Visual Plus, KGET Friday Football Extra, Crab Radio 106.1 FM, and Fox Sports 970 AM. If it isn't our friendly fans of Bright House Networks getting settled in for the semifinal Division I playoff game, a revisit of a big football game played here October 29th. Centennial hosting the Drillers. Thank you to Zach Ewing from the Bakersfield, California and being part of our pregame show. Let's go down to the grass immediately to our captain, a BHS driller, a UCLA Bruin, and a man that's going to be down on the ground all night long. Captain Brian Adams, your thoughts before kickoff. Well, Vance, the games don't get any bigger than this unless you're playing for the finals next week. And the leader team tonight, the team that can eliminate mistakes and play with poise, I think will walk away with a victory. Here we go, packed house. My guess is 7,000 people here. It's a short kick. It's going to be taken at the 18-yard line by Johnson. And a big hit, and he's taken down right at about the 20-yard line. It's bring back into the broadcast, my partner, for the entire season up here, Matt Alvarez. Matt, give us some numbers on uh, the BHS Drillers. Well, BHS is led by their senior quarterback, Brian Burrell. He's 90 of 153 attempts on the season, 1,369 yards, 15 touchdowns through the air against two interceptions, Vance. And, of course, in the backfield, you're going to see Silas Nasita and Walter Hunt. But look for their big threat deep. That's Mercy Matson, the senior. He's gone for eight touchdowns as a wide receiver. First and 10, the Drillers offense under the direction of quarterback Brian Burrell, a senior. He's in that mini shotgun. He's right below center, but about two feet away. And Brian's going to keep it himself. Burrell gets brought down at about the 25-yard line. I would say maybe, maybe a gain of three or four. That was a power-packed pregame with Zach Ewing, kind of giving us an insight and his thoughts. And now we get to take over and call a very, very exciting football game between two very good football programs, two top-notch coaches, the biggest names in quarterback in Cody Kessler, number one in the state, number two in the nation. Here come the drillers on a second and six. Burrell on a keeper. Burrell looks up field, and uh, that's a nice run for the drillers. Burrell picks up what probably is going to be a first down, and now the helicopters are flying over. Who knows? Maybe that shot that they're taking is being beamed back to Sports Center. You just never know. Well, just remember, Vance, that the last time BHS played Centennial on their first possession, they were three and out, and then Centennial was out of the gate from there. So good job by BHS to pick up the first down, stick with their main man, Brian Burrell. It's been two runs by their quarterback, Burrell. Gabriel Cardenas way out to the left side as a receiver and in motion again, they send Hannibal. Burrell looks, throws out to the aforementioned Cardenas, and it was overthrown, and the Centennial crowd likes it. And there are still, I mean, a lot of people still coming in. Not just a few people. There are a lot of people lined up coming through, and there are no more, there are no more seats. The bleachers in the end zones are packed. The bleachers below us are packed. So it's going to be standing room only from here on out. Second and 10, just underway. Drillers did pick up a first down on their second place, so and now it's a second and 10. Tight set back there for Burrell. Burrell looks like he might keep it again. Burrell gets about four yards. You know, Brian, if Burrell can, you know, chew up three yards, four yards, five yards here and there, mix in a couple of pass plays, at least, as Matt said, it keeps him in the ball game. Well, Vance, the one thing it does is it chews up the clock and you keep Cody Kessler and that vaunted Centennial offense on the sideline. And that's the, really the best way to, to thwart a good offensive team is to keep them limited to their time on the field. And again, I like what BHS is doing. They haven't panicked. They're staying with the game. They're going to be methodical about offensively, and they know they have some chances later on or during this series maybe to take a chance when it's wide open. But I like what the drillers are doing so far. Cardenas wide open and it's going to be a bullet and it's right out there. Can Cardenas make it to the end zone? He makes one cut and he gets hit down to the 13 yard line and a perfect pass by Burrell. Miscommunication out there in the defensive backfield and Brian, he just said it, Matt. Give him an opportunity and pow, here's our audio dish instant plus replay. Well, you see there on the AV plus instant replay, Cardenas, you know, if he wouldn't have cut back, I think he might have had, he might have had some, something going there on the near side, but he decided to take it up the middle and he tried to get a block but nonetheless BHS in good scoring position here at the 13 yard line 
first and 10. And here come the drillers. Burrell looks like he might keep it. And the long-legged quarterback bulls his way up for a first down. Looks like it might be first and goal from about the three-yard line. And Brian Adams, this is nothing new to Centennial. They know the drillers have this in their arsenal. They know they have this. So this is not a shock to the system. But on a second and one, it's more of a real big picker-upper for this driller faithful. Well, Vance, what's that, what's that song they say? What a difference a day makes. And right, I tell you, you right, know, it's, right. a, it's just a tale of two nights. Drillers offensively look much better and much more fluid. And you see right here, Burrell's going to just take it up the middle and almost scores. He's about down to about the half-yard line. But, you know, Vance, that's why I was just saying that, that they just look more confident offensively in this first series. And they took advantage of a, of a miscue on the corner right there and had the big play. And now it's Burrell just working the ball down. Well, this is looking like a statement drive for the drillers here. They've taken it all the way down after not getting a very good kickoff return on that short kick. They've taken it all the way down, marched down the field, helped by a big passing play to Gabriel Cardenas. And it looks like they might go in for a score here. And they're going to, if they can break the ice here, Vance, that'll play big dividends. Clovis West hosting Clovis up I-99 tonight. I think everybody and their brother and their brother's cousins thinks that Clovis West will handle Clovis by a bunch, and so conventional wisdom is saying that no matter who wins this game down here, they'll travel, but you never know. First and goal from the one, everybody tight, tightly packed in there, and Burrell muscles his way in, and it's touchdown BHS, and that blue and white crowd goes crazy. So, pretty much just what was prescribed by head coach Paul Gola and his driller offense, let's be Concise, let's be safe with the football. If we have a nice pass play, we'll run it. They did, and they marched down the field, 6-0 drillers. Well, this is something we didn't see in the first match of Vance. If you remember, BHS was down 14 to nothing before they even got some sort of offensive spark. Now they've turned the tables, about to go up 7-0 here, pending the extra point. The snap, the hold, the kick, and it's way up, and it's way good. Well, I tell you, fellas, I, you know, I can't talk. My Bruins have had a bad season. But, boy, Matt, you wish you could have had a kicker like that last night. Oh. <laughs> All right, before we get too far into the night. Touche. I need to let some of our first-time oh. viewers know as we see this nice touchdown replay. Uh, for those of you that maybe have never watched a game before on Bright House Networks, and tonight is the night because there's so much hype about this, my two partners are both Pac-10 graduates. Matt Alvarez graduated from the University of Arizona. Brian Williams, UCLA Bruin. Brian Adams, maybe. Uh, who did I say? Brian Williams, NBC Brian News anchor. Williams or, or Brian Williams, the South High Rebel. So Brian Adams, uh, UCLA Bruin. Um, Matt Alvarez, tough loss last night for the Cats. UCLA Bruins trying to hang on and battle tomorrow against the Trojans. So for those of you that might not know our inside stories, you know now. I've got a Wildcat up here with me, a Bruin down there, and last night the Cats Zendejas had another low kick block, and their season ends in turmoil. And I mean it, turmoil. That's a bad way to lose. Well, we still have a bowl game upcoming, though, Vance. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, but going up, you know, a four loss, four consecutive losses for the Wildcats doesn't bode well going into a bowl game against a pretty good Big 12 team. All right. Well, guess what? We've got quite a game taking place tonight here between the most successful high school football team in the state of California and the number two seed in the Central CIF, and they would have been number one had it not been for that Cinderella win by the Liberty Patriots, last play of the game uh, over at Liberty. Centennial possibly could have seen themselves in the state playoff system had they won the Valley, if and, they won the Valley. And Vance, guys, this is where this is different from Centennial teams in the past. They have playmakers now in their special teams game. Both Grimes and, and, and uh, Johnson can take it to the distance of the house and let it go through. All right, the Golden Hawks are going to get an opportunity to have the football in their hands. And uh, a nice, nice effort by Jared Norris still on his feet. And the tough linebacker gets up to about the 31-yard line. So what do you do when you have two kick returners that are as lethal as Johnson and Grimes? You kick it away from them, Brian. And you tell Norris next time, man, go up, we're going to get it. You know, and that's, again, you have that's, that comes with, with uh, experience. You start seeing the guns flip it to you because you've been dangerous all year long. You got to tell Jared, this kick like that, I'm going to come get it. You just go hit somebody for me. But what's ironic about that, though, is that Norris is a University of Utah commit at linebacker. So he's an athlete himself. So he's very capable of making something happen when he has the ball in his hands. That is not the athlete who can go 90. All right, here we go. Cody Kessler has his housemate, Sean Johnson, behind him as we see 
Grimes go in motion. Tyler Freeze goes in motion, so a strong left side. First play of the game, they go to Sean Johnson. Johnson goes out to the right side, and he gets a gain of about six yards. So we've talked about it internally all week long, you and I, and phone calls, and Brian, everybody would kind of chit-chat it amongst our friends in the, uh, in the area that Sean Johnson has developed into not just an option, but the option. Well, Cody Kessler even said himself in his interview in the Bakersfield, California, he said, I'm surprised that no one has picked Sean Johnson up recruiting-wise. You know, Johnson comes into this game with 700, 1,786 yards and 19 touchdowns on the season, so he's definitely an option. Oh, he will be. Martinez and Freeze break way out to the left. Kessler's going to go to the air for the first time. And he hits Grimes at about the 44-yard line, and that'll be a first down centennial. You know, guys, you guys are talking about Johnson, and one of the things is we know Moyer had the real big year in terms of the numbers, and he led everybody. But to me, Johnson is the one back that does everything well. He catches the ball well, he runs the ball well, and he also blocks well, as you see by the numbers of Cody Kessler. Eight minutes remaining in this first quarter. We're just underway. That's the kind of game that's going to fly by because there's just so much action and intensity packed into it. Kessler rolls to his left. He's in trouble, gets flushed out of the pocket. No trouble there, though. Cody wants to just run the ball. Stiff arms one guy, gets shoved out of a bounds. At about the line of scrimmage, maybe he picked up a yard. That you never really get the feeling that Cody's in that much trouble when he's in the backfield. No, absolutely not. He's definitely the type of athlete that can evade the pressure, as you see here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. Gets chased out of the pocket there. Good job by Mercy Matson to chase him out. And then watch, you see the stiff arm right there on Rutherford. And then he gets pushed out of bounds. And, you know, like Rutherford threw his hands up, and that's... Dominic Rutherford, the brother of Donovan Rutherford. Michael Martins split out to the right side, and now we're going to see Timmy Martinez. Nice to see him back in this lineup. Sean Johnson right up the middle and gets a couple of yards. You're watching Bright House Network's high school football game of the week. Semifinals of the 2010 playoffs were at Centennial High School where they are hosting the number three drillers. So it's number two versus number three right now. And uh, the winner of this game will face the winner of Clovis West Clovis. It's going to be a third down and seven, so a long third down. Pretty much right in Cody Kessler's wheelhouse. Long third downs. Well, thus far, BHS has done a great job plugging the inside running lane, so obviously Centennial's going to have to go to the pass here as Cody's now in a single setback, as they call a timeout, looks like. Sean Johnson was running over to the sidelines to get behind Michael Martins. Tonight, we will be discussing the coveted, illustrious 2010 APA Awards. Of course, we're speaking of the Adams Palm Alvarez Awards that carry a lot of weight, carry a lot of tradition. It started off originally as the AP Awards, and then we brought in Paul Press for a couple of seasons. It was the APP Awards, and then... Kevin Keyes joined us for a season and a quarter, and so it became the CAP Awards. We let the older guys start off with CAP. But now we are, I think, symmetrically perfect with the APA Awards, Adams Palm Alvarez. We'll get to that later in the ballgame. We do have an offensive APA Award Player of the Year, a defensive APA Player of the Year, and an MVP Player of the Year. And we also have some specific position APA Awards that we'll get to. Right now it's third and seven, 7.05 left in this first quarter fans still streaming in through the gates. Not a parking spot left in the area. Kessler looks to his left, looks to his right. Great protection and through the hands of Tyler Freeze. And that brings up a fourth and long, so the drillers hold him. You know, it went through Freeze's hands. Don't know if he'd have the first down anyway. Tyler Freeze, if you watch, if we get a replay on that, you will never see his head go up to see the ball. His head stayed at the same level, hands went up, and the ball went right through it. A no huddle punt scenario. Kessler is the punter, so he gets one and it angles out or over to about the 20 yard line. So a nice job and a perfect punt. Look at this. Kessler gets it down to the two yard line. What a great punt by Cody. <laughs> and Brandon Johnson, the returner for BHS, is tapping himself on the chest saying, you know, that's that's my fault, my bad. But you know what? As a punt returner, you have to get away from the ball in that instance. And that's just a lucky bounce, a, a great bounce for Cody Kessler. Sure, but you're right. And you see the ball roll down to about the two and a half yard line. Downed I, right there by Tyler Freeze. Man, I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. I think if you're Coach Gola, 
You'd Rick, rather have it first and 10 your ball than first and 10 Centennial on the right. eight-yard line. And, and it's a great call by Matt right there. There's no chance of the punt return if you get to the ball. It's just like you said, just a great bounce, and, and sometimes that's how the ball goes. Ball bounces, but now Centennial's defense has to take advantage of this field position. Well, the drillers have to go 98 yards, so Burrell, oh, hit hard at the line of scrimmage, almost thrown for a safety, and he is hammered up there and yeah. didn't see who the big hit was. Maybe we'll see it here. Boom. Well, Jared Norris, one of the two, of course. Well, guys, what's dangerous, Matt and Vance, with, with them right now, is the way VHS runs their offense, they pitch the ball a lot. Yep. And, you know, now you take a chance of pitching this ball in the end zone, a mishap on the pitch, a safety, and anybody can recover it. They have to be very, very good with ball uh, control right now. Well, a real wide set now. Burrell has everybody out, spread out. Now Burrell's going to just try to get some room and some space up there, give them a third and seven probably. A little bit more manageable, but Brian, I'm sure they felt the uh, the chill too and said no more of that uh, wide pitch stuff. You know, and I like that. Some nice safe plays. That's the quarterback keeper. You can do a draw play, anything else with your backs, but the main thing is you're trying to give yourself some room. And right now, the real issue is if you can get a first down, great, but if you can't, just punt the ball and set your defense up. Now you got to hope that your punter gets a good punt and backs them back up. Third and five, less than I thought to get first down. Burrell's going to go to his left, and a nice pass play. I don't know if he'll get the first down, and it's caught out there by Walter Hunt. Nice to see Hunt back in uh, a white, blue and white uniform for the Drillers. They've missed him, but he's back, and did they get the first? Very, very close, and I think everybody thought they were going to go across the middle again, and Hunt goes down at the, uh, I would say, the 13-yard line if it's, a, if it's a generous spot. Look at this, everybody. First down, Drillers. Well, good job of showing some poise. Went back into a corner by the Drillers, picking up the first down deep in their own territory. Fresh set of downs for Brian Burrell and company. Well, great play call. I think everybody thought they were going to go back to the middle like they did on their uh, their big, long pass play in the uh, previous series. Hannibal in motion again, and they give the ball to Nasidis. He just hops over the pile for maybe one or two yards. I'm Vance Palm, joined by Matt Alvarez on top of the Premier Equipment Scissor Lift down on the grass. Longtime captain of this crew, Brian Adams. Well, you've seen Nasida here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. <laughs> now it's Centennial doing a good job of clogging the inside running lanes as they pounded Burrell back at the one yard line. But BHS was obviously able to pick up the first down. But you know what? Nasida got about four yards out of that, so it's a lot more than it looked like. Second and six. Burrell, hard count, nobody goes. Hannibal behind them. Burrell looks across the middle this time and it almost picked off out there. Had he thrown it under, a little bit short, might have been caught out there by Ricard Van Horn. Richard was behind, he was you know, trailing behind the defender, which was Timmy Martinez, but it almost picked off. Well, Timmy Martinez does a great job. He leads this team in interceptions, and he always does a great job on both sides of the ball, Vance. Remember last time he had a, what was it, a 75 or a 92 yard pass play in which he scored a touchdown. So he's definitely a threat on both sides of the ball for Centennial. So third and six, they went for another long play to Van Horn, didn't get it. Now split out to the left side is Luck. Burrell, nice opportunity for him to run here possibly, but he goes to the right side, wants to put the ball in the air, and oh, it goes through the hands and out of the hands of Chris Hannibal. The Golden Hawks hold, and the Drillers will have to punt. A good defensive hold by Centennial after giving up a first down deep in BHS territory. You see here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay, just a designed rollout play for Burrell, then he throws, and let's see if that ball yeah that ball could have been caught out there by Hannibal but you know, he, he may have had enough yardage to pick up a first down it would have been really close but nonetheless BHS forced into their first punting position of the night fourth and six 442 left in this first quarter it's going to be Nasita punting the ball for BHS and he gets off of sky punt it's taken by Johnson Johnson cuts to the right side. Good open field tackle out there by Kyle Pope, the linebacker for BHS on special teams coverage. So BHS holding Centennial to no yards gain there on that kickoff return. In fact, they might have lost a couple yards. But Centennial will start their second drive tonight on the 42-yard line on their own half of the field. Well, I'll tell you guys, they're glad that Pope made that tackle because I think if he gets by there, he's going to have some room to make a big play there on the sideline. Yeah, Brian, I think that's exactly why that BHS crowd was so fired up. I was 
not just any shoestring tackle. That was a big shoestring tackle. First and ten, Golden Ox. Kessler. Look at this formation. Party in the backfield. Wow, there they go. It's like an arena football formation. Now it ends up with just Sean Johnson to his right. First and ten from their own 43-yard line. Audible from Kessler. Everybody looks back. Kessler takes a look at his left, now goes to his right. The driller's in hot pursuit. And thrown out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Centennial crowd and sidelines wanted a horse collar, but actually I think the driller just had a hold of his number seven. Oh, well, that was Dominic Rutherford, the driller. You see that original pump fake at the beginning of the play by Kessler enabled him to get some room on the right side. You see Dominic Rutherford, who's already, I think they're spying on him, Vance. I think they have Rutherford keying on Kessler because that's the second time we've seen Rutherford all over Kessler when Kessler gets out of the backfield. Well, David Williams, the dangerous linebacker for the drillers, keyed in on Carson Moyer a few weeks ago, and that became a one-on-one -on -one game. Second and 10, Kessler. Flushed out again. Kessler finds his man. It goes through the hands of Martinez. And guess who was there again, Vance? That was Rutherford, who was there. Kessler stepped up into the pocket. Looked like he might have been able to run, but Rutherford was sitting right there waiting for Kessler, as you see here on the Audiovisual Plus Instant Replay. There's Rutherford, and then right through the hands of Tim Martinez, like you said. So it's going to be another third down situation here for Centennial. Kessler held on to it to the very end, as long as he could hang on to it, and probably should have been caught. These are his sure-handed guys he's been going to for a lot of years. Third and 10. Under four and a half remaining in the first quarter. Now Kessler's all by himself. Johnson in the slot. Strong left side for an air attack. Here come the drillers at him. Kessler in big trouble. Flushed out of the pocket. Can Kessler get free? He cannot. He's thrown down hard at the 31-yard line. Look out, driller D. Well, who else? Silas Nasita, Vance. It was Silas Nasita who came in and made the big hit, and he held Kessler by the back of the jersey. You see here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. Look at Nasita, the persistence to get away from the big block of Jarrett Moore, and then Rutherford again in there with the huge hit on Kessler at the end of the play. What about those defensive backs, Brian? Well, tonight they're covering. They're not blowing assignments. They're not making the, different, the same mistakes they made a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago anyway, I'm sorry. And uh, they're playing just good football. Another very nice punt by Cody Kessler. Just these balls take perfect bounces. And now Coach Kessler, I think Kessler and Coach Nixon down on the sidelines having a quick discussion about things. And really, as much as anything, it's this defense for the drillers. As Brian said, learn their lessons, study the scouting tapes. But Kessler punt puts the drillers way back in their territory again. Here you go, Matt. Uh, you see tonight's officials, the referee Alex Edior, the umpire Robin Blair, the line judge Rocky O'Neill, the headlinesman Rory Clark, and the back judge Dennis Matthews. I think that was Roy Clark on the headlinesman. I'm a picket. That's your buddy. I'm a grinner. Burrell tackled after about a gain of one on the right side. They run that option again, Vance, and you see Burrell. You, know, you see Centennial kind of zoning in on that now. They, they know what's coming from this BHS offense, but... It's when they fake that triple option and then Burrell steps back and fires that pass over the middle. That's what gets Centennial. That's what has gotten Centennial the last couple of times. Tonight's production under the direction of the main man. They, let the, they leave the heavy lifting to the senior director, Bernie Johnson, tonight handling tonight's big, big football game. And as always, we're in very good hands with Bernie. Thank you, sir. Second and nine. Burrell to his left. Pitches. This time the pitch. And he's got a lot of room, and he picks up a nice gain there, and that's Walter Hunt. So Hunt now, the recipient of a well-timed pitch, and that relationship between the quarterback and the running back. Well, Hunt was the recipient of a good block right here by Silas Nasita. Look at, look at Nasita right there in front of the screen on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay, running his man off the ball, and that was Matt Johns, the linebacker, who was attempting to take down, this, or take down a Hunt, rather. And Nasita ran him off the play. Good job of downfield blocking. Time of possession right now, dominated by the drillers. Burrell takes a look, another pitch. This time it's to Hannibal. Hannibal takes it up to about the 35-yard line. The clock continues to tick. 7-0 drillers here in the first quarter. I'm Vance Palm joined by Matt Alvarez. Captain, what's on your mind? You know, guys, I'll tell you one thing that, that if I'm Centennial, I don't like is I want, I'd rather have Burrell keep the ball 
and run against me than get the other guys involved. The other guys are a little bit more explosive than Burrell. The other guys that can go the distance. We saw Nasidis in the game against Liberty. I'd rather have those guys not touching the ball and make Burrell force it to come upside, inside, get those three and four yards as opposed to these six, seven yard runs by the other guys. Under two now in this first quarter. Burrell has Hunt behind him. Now Burrell keeps it, gets up to about the 36-yard line. That'll bring up third and three, a manageable third and three. Head coach for the Bakersfield High School Drillers, Paul Gola. Head coach for the Centennial Golden Hawks, Brian Nixon, two of the finest. Well, one of the finest linebackers in the league right there put his, uh, put his face mask right into the hip of Brian Burrell and drug him down. That was Jared Norris, as we mentioned earlier. He's going to the University of Utah next year, so he'll be a member of the Pac-10 as well. Maybe we can get him on the broadcast sometime. You know, and one thing with him that, that separates him is his ability to run the field. You know, he had those four games he missed, but he can run the field probably better than any linebacker we've seen, guys. We've got a timeout on the field with a buck 15. I want to thank the people that have been with us all season long, our sponsors that make this production possible with the support of Bright House Network's production crew. And, of course, let's start with Premier Equipment Rentals. Are you kidding me? These incredible views that you get all season long from up top are because of Lynn Goodmanson and everybody over at Premier Equipment Rentals. Lynn, thank you so much. We appreciate your sponsorship in kind trade with these great scissor lifts. And then how about Audiovisual Plus? Everything you would ever need for all of your audiovisual needs, including the podium. And then our media sponsors. You kidding me our media sponsors first of all start with crab radio we'll have our crab crush of the evening hopefully not a premature crab crush but it'll be the crab radio crab crush and also khty fox sports radio 970 i had six hours this morning of fox radio I was out, I was out in the vineyards and dan patrick and jim rome i couldn't have laughed harder with jim rome today and kget friday football extra todd strain the prime minister of sports here in kern county Thank you. Here we go. Buck 15 left. Third and three. Burrell. Hard count. Almost got the Golden Hawks to do it. Now in motion is Johnson. They pitch to Johnson. It's trouble. It's a fumble. He picks it back up, and I think he may have picked it back up and maybe got back down the line of scrimmage. Yeah, oh. I think he got back to the line of scrimmage. Definitely not a first down, Vance, but that's, you know, you're flirting with disaster when you run that option so many times, and you see Johnson able to pick up the ball and, Boy, he gets back to the line of scrimmage like you said, but that is, whew, you're playing with fire. Boy, that's some sure nice foot camera coverage down there. Who is that? Of course, of course, Carlos Anguiano. Great work, Carlos. Fourth and two, so they're going to punt the football. Man, they, they really probably are stuck kicking himself in the toe there. They really wanted a uh, first down out of that, but instead it's a punt. And Sean Johnson, the dangerous Sean John waiting at the 30-yard line. This punt is going to go bat bats him. He picks it up at the 20-yard line, 18-yard line. Johnson looking for some room. Johnson still on his feet. Can he get out? No, he cannot. Brought down at about the 21-yard line. Ooh, every time he touches that football, he, he just holds your breath. You just never know. And next defenders miss. There's one, two, three. And finally brought down from behind out there by Pope. First and 10. And the Golden Hawks will have it at their own 22-yard line. Captain. Well, I'll tell you one thing about that punt. You know, Matt, you talk about punting. It was good as it was angled out to the sideline, so it gave him little room to run. He couldn't go back to his left. He had to try to work on the sideline, and that let the defenders pin him kind of pin him into the sideline. And when he was able to make it, the third, fourth guy miss, then the guys came in to wash and cleaned him up. But, you know, don't think they're going to hold Cody Kessler all night long. Something's going to break. Either Sean Johnson's going to get going or they're going to get Cody going pretty soon. The triple set at the top of your screen. As Norris comes in a little bit tighter. And Sean Johnson now takes the football and delivers some punishment out there. Long first down on a first down. And you see Johnson going up the middle. Well, he delivered a shot right there to Mercy Madsen on the defensive end. Watch the audiovisual plus instant replay. Watch this. Johnson, boom, right there. Big hit on Matson as we end, we near the end of the first quarter here. That's going to do it. The first quarter has come to an end. Seven to nothing. The Bakersfield High School Drillers, this Division I semifinal playoff game. The big game, part two. Back in a moment on Bright House Networks with the second quarter.
Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970. With Dan Patrick in the morning and Jim Rome 9 to noon. Home for the world. Bakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports. It's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. Welcome back, everybody. Vance Palm alongside Matt Alvarez up top. The scissor lift down on the grass, as always, our captain, Brian Adams. And uh, we were away for this first down play where Kessler gets kind of tied up and actually loses three yards. So now it's second and 13 as we start the second quarter. Sean Johnson to the right hip of Cody Kessler. The driller defense has done a pretty good job so far. They want to go deep. They want to go to the corner. He lobs it out and overthrows his intended receiver of Michael Martin. So on him like a glove was Brandon Johnson. Now you see here, Kessler has a lot of time in the backfield, and that's something that he hasn't had a lot of tonight because BHS has been blitzing, and they brought the blitz again, but the, uh, the guys got there a little late, but you see Martin's the pass just overthrown, but Johnson, like you said, Vance, was on him like a glove. Third and 13. <clears throat> Fans still coming in. People still coming around trying to find a seat. Massive, massive crowd here tonight. BHS sidelines. Popping up and down. They are fired up. Strong triple set out here to the left side. The bottom of your screen, now they're out of your picture. They're so far out. Kessler wants to go only to his only receiver on the right side, and actually it's completed to... <laughs> caught out there by one of the coaches. There's Gus. Gus caught it. Well, guys, I don't think their receiving core is athletic enough to try to go those kind of routes on, on the driller secondary. I think they have to go back to what they did in, in a few a few weeks ago. Remember, Matt, they got the one big play on the sideline because of, of the cross, because of the, the mix up in the secondary. But they got the other big plays with guys going across the field, dragging that 15 yards across the field and getting some separation. But trying to run sideline routes and beating these guys straight down the sideline on the streak, that's not not in their wheelhouse. Cody Kessler, the punter as well. And now, look at this nice punt by Cody, but it's going to be taken by Masson at the 30-yard line. Masson looking for some room. I don't know how much room he's going to have. He's going to need to pick up some blocks, gets a little bit of room. Now he cuts back the other way. Mercy's in trouble. Mercy, mercy me. Picks up one block, still on his feet. And covered a lot of ground, used up a lot of energy. But did get a lot of yards. Got five yards. Well, for all the ground he covered, Vance, I mean, he covered at least about... 60 or 70 yards well, on this play running that's the 30 yard east line and here. west well watch this he picks up the block at the very end of the play he realized he doesn't have anything going this way and i would never advise running backwards once you picked up yards on a punt return but <laughs> matson was able to make something out of it on the audio visual plus instant replay then picks up a good block by johnson there on the outside but finally brought down at the 36 yard line so when did he start the 35 you said the 30 so at he got third. six out of it. six yards first and ten burrell and the drillers Burrell on a keeper. Burrell gets free. He's at the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20. Touchdown, BHS. Well, look at that, Vance. Brian Burrell straight up the middle. They run the option once again. He fakes the pitch up the middle, and there he goes. Not going to be caught on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. He's off to the races. No one within about 20 yards. And BHS making a statement tonight. Captain. Fellas, I'm going to tell you right now. They, that was a glaring mistake on the defense right there. There's no way he runs up the middle untouched. Here's the PA team. And it's up and it's through. We're going to see another replay here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. Uh, Brian, walk us through it. I don't have a replay down here, but uh, let's talk about, first of all, he pitches it. He's going to cut the middle. You're going to see no linebacker there to form him up and stop him. Where's the safety at in the pitcher? There's no safety. They must have been in a man coverage and spread out because once he hit down the, once he hit down the, middle, of the side, middle of the field, there was nobody's going to catch him. 
Brian, you didn't need a monitor. You called it perfect. Who picked up that block downfield, Matt? And it looked like one of the offensive linemen. I think it was number 55, Daniel Cox, picked up a great block on number 44, Brody Scott, the all-everything uh, linebacker for the Centennial defensive crew. But nonetheless, look at this, 14-0. The tables are turned, Vance. It was 14-0 before BHS even got anything going offensively in version one of this rivalry. And now it's 14-0 drillers. No. One thing about the driller defense they're doing tonight, they're playing much more disciplined. You just see them, they're not trying to switch things in the backfield, secondary, and mixing them up. They're playing soft sometimes, they're playing pressure up on them sometimes. They're varying their coverages, and again, they're using their athleticism against the receivers for Centennial. I think the Centennial receiver who has the ability to match up athletically is Thomas Grimes. They gotta figure out a way for him to get active in that slot. He's had some big games for Centennial the last couple years, and they're gonna need his athleticism to make the big plays. Thank you, Brian. 14 nothing. now the Centennial Golden Hawks crowd starting to realize, hey, wait a minute here, hold it, hold it, hold it. So they're up on their feet, and they're, uh, I think they're gonna start chiming in here and making these uh, Golden Hawks realize we're behind you. Let's go. So the Drillers up 14 nothing. early goings in the second quarter. A mountain of time left here in the first half alone. Right House Network's exclusive coverage of the entire football game. And there's the kick, and it's a funky one, and it's going to be taken. Fumble at the eight-yard line. Sean Johnson now has a lot of room, a lot of room. Johnson at the 40, cuts back against the grain at the 50. Sean Johnson at the 40, Sean Johnson at the 30. Sean Johnson still on his feet, right down at the 18-yard line. Oh, look like he stepped out of bounds at the 21, but what a run back by Sean Johnson, igniting the Centennial sideline in the Centennial crowd directly below us, Vance. You know, it looked like it was gonna go all south when Johnson fumbled the ball, but then he picked up some great blocking on the Audio Visual Plus instant replay. Then it was all him from then on. You see Thomas Grimes down the field making some blocks, gets around Rutherford. Look at Grimes down there making a big block right there on Johnson. And then the other Johnson, Sean Johnson, it's Parker Campbell who forces Sean Johnson to step out of bounds right there at the 21 yard line. But this is plenty of room for Kessler to work. That's why you let the ball go, Mr. Norris. That's why you let the ball go. Johnson's definitely up for one of the APA awards. He's oh. probably our special teams guy of the year. He's had, I think, two or three um, return backs this year. Probably. We haven't said anything about it, but, I mean, he's been able to change the game in many different facets. Very prescient of you, Brian Adams, our captain. 10-22 in this First half remaining, and now the Centennial crowd below us fired up. Grimes in motion. Brian mentioned he needs to be more involved in this offense. Guess who they throw it to? Thomas Grimes. Grimes to the 12-yard line, and our first flag of the game comes in from the back judge standing on the goal line. Well, David Price, the linebacker for BHS, was clapping his hands as to signify that it was going to go against Centennials. You see Thomas Grimes. Let's get the call here. It's going to be a holding against Centennial. So it's going to negate that good pass play over to Grimes. Grimes, when Grimes went in motion, you almost could get the sense that's where they were going with it. Brian called it just well, one, before that. One thing about Nixon, one thing he's able to do is he knows when to get his playmakers and get guys involved. So you got to feel he called that spe specifically to get Thomas involved in the game and make some big plays, what he's able to do. But again, the Centennial Golden Hawks have to stay keep the composure. Ryan Nixon having a word with the side judge about that call. The side judge put his hands up like, my man, that's not my call, but I understand your pain. Nixon, I mean, uh, Kessler looks to his right side, and he was never going to go to Sean Johnson. He was going to try to come back opposite side on a screen play, but it never developed. Well, it was Kyle Pope down there who was putting the big pressure on Cody Kessler, and he came off the right side untouched. No one was blocking him whatsoever, and Kessler had no idea because Kessler was looking at Sean Johnson on the far side of the field. No, fellas, he was setting up screen to, to Thomas Grimes. Thomas Grimes came back underneath, and what happened is they didn't blitz like they have been, and the other guys held back, and so they weren't blitzing. There were three linemen right around Thomas Grimes. That's why he threw the ball at his feet. Thank you, Brian. Second and 13. Split way out to the left is Michael Martin. Johnson back there with Kessler. Now Kessler audibleizes goes right behind center and now timeout going to be taken by the uh, Centennial Golden Hawks sideline and coach Nixon not happy 
burns a timeout. They trail 14 to nothing. I'm not quite sure who he's vocalizing with that. Whether you see a good look at him. Well, let's take this opportunity to give out our first APA award, the Adams Palm Alvarez Award. And I'm going to have Matt start out by giving our first APA award to, appropriately enough, our kicker. Our kicker for the APA award this year, coming into the season, projected to be probably an APA winner. Matt, give us the word on our first APA award winner tonight, our kicker. Well, APA award kicker, he's gonna be playing ball with Cody Kessler next year at USC, so none other than Stockdale's own Andre Haidari. Congratulations to Haidari for winning the APA award for 2010. I mean, the guy is just a menace. How many kickoffs did we see in during his games? You know, in the game you weren't here, Brian, he kicked about, or the game you weren't here, Vance, uh, me and Brian saw him kick about six or seven into the end zone, and you know, he's, Definitely leading the county in touch in touchbacks, rather. Hey, Vance, we were doing over under on how far it was going into the end zone that night. <laughs> we'll give you some more numbers. Uh, well, actually, we'll give them to you right now on Hadari. Now there's a timeout on BHS. Number one kicker in the section, Hadari, APA award winner. Yeah, he's gone eight for 11 this year on field goals with a long of 50. And keep in mind, they go back and forth with their field goal kickers over at Stockdale because they have Tyler Schleicher, also a senior, but Hadari has just been a man amongst boys in the kicking game this year. And I got to tell you, Haidari is one of the best that I've ever seen, Vance. So our first APA award winner, Haidari from Stockdale High School. You're wondering what comes along with the prestigious APA award. Well, first of all, you will live in the annals of talked about chit chats conversations amongst the Bright House Network's faithful who watch these games every single Friday night and then of course on demand so uh, congratulations that's your first award the second award is you get guys like Brian Adams and Matt Alvarez to mention you on television so hi Dari our first APA award winner congratulations here we go second and 13 we're back after back-to-back -back timeouts one by Centennial one by BHS Kessler all alone, now he has Sean Johnson. They're gonna go to Johnson. Will Johnson throw it? No, he'll run it. Johnson looking for the sideline, nice job by the BHS defense, could have been worse. <laughs> could have been a TD, not bad, Captain. Well, Vance, you know, exactly what you're continuing, what you want. Second down, you picked up some good yardage. Now you're in about third and manageable. Now, the reason why I say third and manageable is because you got Cody Kessler as your quarterback. He's able to scramble for you. He can pick up a first down with his legs or with his arm. Third and four, Kessler has Johnson to his right, triples out to the right side. He's got three guys looking at that way. Now Kessler steps up, has his man, and it's Johnson. Touchdown, Centennial. Boy, that was pretty. Very nice. Well, you go back to your main man, Sean Johnson, here in the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. Kessler steps up into the pocket, looks like he's gonna run, then fires it to a wide open Sean Johnson. And I don't know about you, Vance, but I saw a lot of hands up in the air, shrugs from the BHS defense as, hey, I thought you had him. I thought you had him. Fantastic poise under pressure as we see the BAT. Williams up and through. He's had a nice season himself. So now, Golden Hawks answer. Make it 14-7 BHS after a long kickoff return by Sean Johnson. And now we see Kessler. We have a BHS driller just flies by him, about to hit him, and that was Nasita. And a nice screen, almost a screen set out there for Johnson. He just tiptoes in, and uh, not that it wasn't always going to be a game, but most certainly now, 14-7. Here come the Golden Hawks. They're back in it. Well, Vance, you know, the one thing about it is now you're one position away from a tie game. But again, we've talked about it all year long, and, I, and Matt, Vance, we talked about it all year long, three of us off air, on air. Sean Johnson is the difference maker between Centennial last year and Centennial's in the past. They've been able to have guys that can throw the ball, they can score, but they never had a big time playmaker in that running back position like Sean Johnson. This is what we talked about in, in pregame, I believe, a few weeks ago. His ability to do kickoff returns, make big plays. He's a guy who can go eight yards, three yards, four yards, or 90 yards. And he's the difference maker for Centennial offensively. And tonight, if he has a big game, it could be trouble for the drillers. Well, guess who our second APA Award winner is? Our special teams APA Award winner. Appropriately, right now, we'll do it. Matt. 
Well, who else, Vance? The guy who just scored the touchdown for you. Even though it wasn't a special teams touchdown, it was still a touchdown nonetheless to bring this game to within seven. But, yeah, we, a perfect segue. Sean Johnson is going to be the winner of our special teams APA award for 2010. So congratulations to Mr. Johnson. He leads the section with 451 return yards, an average of 56 yards an attempt, Vance. That's that's unbelievable as uh -oh. that kickoff goes out of bounds. Uh oh kickoff goes out of bounds. So after... A great return by Johnson, a touchdown from Kessler to Johnson. Now the kickoff goes out of bounds, kind of like a, a bummer time to stop that, but not lost in all of this. Again, our second APA award goes out to Sean Johnson. Brian mentioned it without really even knowing yet. <laughs> Brian and Matt and I conversed about this all week, and uh, we came to the conclusion. Sean Johnson, specialty teams, APA award winner. He's far more than just a specialty teams guy, as we know, but he certainly stamped his name on kickoff returns. Sean Johnson, congratulations. APA award winner for specialty teams in 2010. Here we go, Burrell. First and 10, 9.46 remaining in the first half. Burrell, Hunt in motion. Burrell, out to Hunt. This time Centennial all over it, nowhere. Well, the receiver lost his block on the outside. That was Cardenas, who had the big catch and run earlier in the game. He lost his block on the outside and able to make the tackle was number 22, Zach Clayton, for Centennial. But it looked like Johnson might have had something on that option there as the Centennial crowd starting to come to life with chance of defense directly below us on this second and nine play. You know, and one thing about the way the drillers, their option is not fast. It is very slow moving. So if you're a receiver out there blocking, you've got to hold your block a little bit longer than a typical receiver would in a, in a faster moving option. Yeah, that's a great point, Brian. Now Burrell wants to go to the air, looks across the middle, has his man, and it's caught. What a fantastic catch. Goodness gracious, caught out there by who else but a Van Horn caught it. And I mean, he was being harassed. And what a catch by Richard Van Horn. Well, good job by the BHS offense to pick up right where they left off at the end of the passing game. You see Burrell just fires a strike in there, threads the needle, and Michael Martin's on the coverage, but Van Horn was able to able to bring it down and able to get some good yardage, a first down at the 41-yard line of Centennial. Martin was climbing on him. And Burrell's three of five, guys. We talked about efficiency. That's what he had to be. Nasidis up the middle. Nasidis oh, almost broke through there. And nice saving tackle by Tyler Thornton before that became a long, long run. So now we're starting to see this take the shape of a prize fight. A couple of big blows early by the drillers. And the Golden Hawks answer, but um, nice tackle out there by Thornton amongst other Golden Hawks. Second and four, though. Nice first down, six yards. As Burrell looks back and says something to Nasidis. They flick it out to the right side, but Centennial says nothing doing there as Hannibal gets zero. Well, Burrell faked about three times on that play. He faked the handoff up the middle and then faked the pitch to Hannibal, and then he threw it to Hannibal. And Hannibal had nothing on the outside, like you said. Getting in there first, making a good play on the ball was Matt Johns for Centennial, and then the rest of the crew converged on the ball. I want to say congratulations to the Centennial ladies volleyball team. I see some of them walking down here below us. Congratulations, ladies. Great job. Third and four. Big play for both teams here with 725 remaining in the first half. Burrell kicks at this one. This time it's kicked out to Hunt. Can Hunt get the first down? Fumble! Well, you see on the Audio Visual Plus Insta Replay to the outside, the big hit delivered right there. Number 18 got in there as Brock Bays. Who picked up the winning lottery ticket for Centennial? I don't know, and that, and that mass of players. It was Alex Zubia. Zubia came up with the ball. You said it was a big play for both sides. Centennial took advantage of it there, and they have a first down going the other way. Woo! Ho, ho, ho. First and 10, no huddle needed. They come from the sidelines. 7-12 remaining in the first half. Kessler, that's what he's all about, these kind of moments. They give it to Johnson. Johnson caught early, makes one Bye -bye. great move. Johnson still on his feet, brought down after a long first down run. One move, and he slips about three defenders, and then the afterburners come on. Woo, boy. 
They would be glad they grabbed him right there, fellas, because otherwise he was off to the race like he did a few a few weeks ago when he broke up the middle and, and broke the game open as a touchdown run. But again, this is what he gives you. He gives you an ability to make guys miss and make something out of nothing. Boy, oh boy, Grimes comes all the way out and has a quick word with Tyler Freeze as he's in the slot. Strong left side for the receiving core. But this time, Kessler out to Johnson. A ton of room. Johnson looks for some downfield blocking. Johnson brought down at the 37-yard line, very close to the first down. Some nice downfield blocking down there by Martinez. Well, you got to think that's the second or third time they've run that quick little pass in the flats to Johnson when they've had trips on that side. You would think they would have somebody keying on him, but BHS didn't, and Johnson able to pick up a good bit of yards. Such excellent coaching staffs for both teams. This game is just doing nothing but getting better every play. Kester out to his right side. This time it's caught out there by Freeze. Freeze picks up the first down. Suffers a couple big hits at the end of it, and a late flag, very late flag. Oh, boy. Well, I know this won't be the call, Vance, but there's a lot of movement going on before the snap. I don't know if you're noticing, and Centennial's clapping like it's on BHS. We'll get the call. Oh, boy, personal helmet foul. To helmet. And I've never liked this call, and I think Brian Adams will agree with me on this, and we'll see here on the replay. Let's see if this is actually a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Well, and Freeze is going yet. down. Yeah. Through the right oh, shoulder in. It's That's almost like your Arizona DB two weeks ago. It's, or it's last just week. tough as a defensive player because you know a guy's one minute his helmet's up here, his body's up here, and he goes down, and you're coming in. So it's just, it's just going to happen from time to time. Kessler this time out to Grimes. Grimes looking for some downfield blocking himself. Grimes breaks the tackle. Grimes gets shoved out of bounds at the three yard line. First down, Golden Hawks. Well, Cap, that finished right at your feet. What'd you see? Well, Vance again. Sean Johnson and Grimes are the best athletes they have in Cody Kessler. And what he's doing right now, he's getting the ball to his playmakers, and they're making plays for him. Right there, Grimes should have been tackled. He slips through, uses the speed, gets the sideline, and Mercy Matson barely puts him out of bounds on the four-yard line. That's another touchdown. Here we go. First and goal from the three. Under six remaining in the first half. Here's a cliche for you. It's electric. Johnson, touchdown! Well, Sean Johnson scores his second touchdown of the night by way of the ground once again. Or he had a pass the first time, actually, but Sean Johnson, look at him bowling over. Yeah. Power, the power right there to get into the end zone. He had Walter Hunt all over him. Centennial one point away from tying this game. A nice job by that offensive line. Oh, a bad snap and a bad handle, and it's no good. The snap came into him sideways, and the holder, Timmy Martinez, as sure of a set of hands as you can have, tried to grab it and put it down quickly. We don't have a replay of it. Oh, boy, 14-13. And remember, guys, it was an extra point missed at the end of Liberty that allowed it to be set up so they could, you know, could get beat. Well, we see the, the touchdown replay, and uh, really great job by the offensive line by the uh, Centennial Golden Hawks. But the story here at the end of this uh, series is a missed PAT. Wow. I know people say, oh, Vance, don't be so dramatic. But 14-13 is the score in a very, very tight ball game here. Here's the play before the touchdown, Matt. Well, actually, this is the touchdown okay. by yeah. Sean Johnson. And you see, you know, Johnson just gets some good blocking up the middle. He has a little bit of a hole, and he has to do some power work on his own. And he gets up in the Walter Hunt trying to take him down, couldn't do so. You know, uh, guys, we talk about Johnson, you know, has not had any uh, scholarship offers yet. I have heard that, that Fresno State is on him pretty good. And, you know, one thing that Fresno State has done historically is come in late on some of the local guys here in Bakersfield. You know, you don't hear anything about them. And then Coach Hill and the staff, they're on them, and they, bring, they pull them in late. And they usually get about two or three guys a year from the Bakersfield area. But what he's showing is versatility. That again, I think that no other player is showing is consistent has, has been as consistent as he has. Special teams, he catches the ball well and he runs the ball well, and he's running with so much power now. He's just making it difficult for the drillers. Johnson at the goal line. 
looking to get back up field. Can Johnson get some blocks? Johnson still has a little bit of room. Not bad at all. That's a 20-yard return when he got it at the two-yard line. Thank you, Brian. Five and a half remaining. Oh, he drops it there and gets a little squirrely with it, but picks up 20 yards to give him some breathing room here. And here come the BHS Drillers, and the Drillers, last time they had the football, they scored a touchdown on a long Brian Burrell run. So uh, this is not bad at all. Actually, they fumbled it away, Vance, on oh, the, right, on right, the far side, the option. You're right, you're right, you're right. But let's see what BHS comes out with this time. You're right about that. First and 10 at their own 22, Burrell has Nasidis right behind him. Hannibal in motion, Burrell. This time he's gonna keep it in himself and gets about four yards. It's almost, a, you know, you can almost go to the bank with him getting three or four yards nearly every single carry. He's long, tall quarterback. Burrell stands at 6'4". He's a 200-pound senior. Remember when he was a sophomore and he came in and took over for the Mitchell clan and everybody said, who's this kid? Boy, has he shown himself. Second and seven, five minutes remaining in this first half. Burrell, this time they go to Nasidis. Nasidis wrapped up. It's about two or three yards there. It'll bring up third and probably five. Yeah, it looks like about a third and five coming up here for BHS, but they go right back up the middle to Nasida. And Nasida on that play before the touchdown when Thomas Grimes ran that play out in the flats, Nasida took a huge hit from Tyler Freeze. The wide receivers, you see here, here's that play we were talking about, Vance. Watch this, they go out to Grimes on the near side. This is on the last possession for Centennial. Boom, right there. Freeze laid a huge hit on Nasida. Nasida was reeling for a minute on the ground, but it's gonna be a third and five here for BHS. Third and five, Hunt in motion. They kick it to Hunt. Hunt. Can he pick up the first down? He does, and more. Hunt still on his feet. What a nice play that is for the Drillers. Well, he got a good block from Chris Hannibal on the outside, and BHS able to pick up the first down. They're gonna go to the 41-yard line now, but Burrell, great job of pitching the ball. We saw Brock Bays in his face, and you know, I, I, if you're a cornerback, if you're Bays, I think you have to pick one or the other. You can't be guessing. I mean, if you're gonna key on Burrell, you gotta give him a lick, no matter if he passes, uh, pitches the ball or not. He shouldn't be the quarterback anyway. I don't know how their scheme is set up, but there should be somebody assigned to each player, the running back, the quarterback, and you just need to follow, Chris, follow your assignment. Burrell maybe gets a yard. Under four left here in this first half. Second and we'll say nine. Maybe he got one. I'm Vance Palm, joined by Matt Alvarez up top on the Premier Equipment Scissor Lift and down low. Is Brian Adams on the grass. You are watching Bright House Network's high school football game of the week. Semifinals, Division I, Golden Hawks and Centennial hosting the Drillers. Look at that score, 14-13, a missed PAT. Three and a half left in the first half. Burrell is gonna send Johnson in motion. Burrell looks downfield, has a man. Oh, will the flag be thrown? It will not. And listen to this BHS crowd. I think it was an inadvertent trip by Zach Clayton, but the Driller crowd wants it. Well, Cardenas was the intended receiver, and Cardenas had a long run earlier on this pass, on the same pass play. And I think you're right, Vance. I think it was incidental contact as it looked like Cardenas got his feet caught up in the cornerback. And so incidental contact, at least that's what the refs ruled. It's going to bring up a third and 10 here. Unfortunate for the BHS fans. Third and 10 at their own 41. Burrell looks out to triple set on his right, but now he takes Johnson in motion. And the ball goes up the middle to a hunt. And uh, nothing doing there. They're going to have to punt this football, or will they? I believe they will, but you never know. I don't see the punt team coming on. Well, going, you know, taking that pat, that run play on third and ten, you got to think he's thinking in two down. He might be trying to take a chance again and getting the first down or, or coming back on the offense. Wow. But, you know, even if he doesn't, I just think you can't get the ball back to Centennial offense right now. If nothing else, they'll go a hard count and then call timeout and punt the football. They haven't used a timeout. Well, they, they did use a timeout, so... I think they have one but left. Gola hands. is the billet checker of local football around here, guys. He will go for a fourth uh, down and, and trust his defense. No hard count. Well, they did. Nobody jumped. So now Burrell looks back, and of course, that's the play. They did go for the hard count. One Golden Hawk got jittery, but not enough. Oh! And Gola ball. is hot, fellas. He just, he is hot about that call right there. 
Well, you never want to give any bit of yardage to this Centennial offense, especially when they're about to get the ball back. But let's see if Nasidas can drop a good punt here inside the 20 or inside the 10 would be even better for the Drillers. How about don't let five standpoint. touch it? Or yeah, don't let Sean Johnson touch it, of course. It's going to angle it again, I can guarantee you that. Low snap, they get it. It's going to be a wobbly one. Let's see where it goes. And Johnson's going to go for it. He's going to try to get to his left. Going to try to get some room out there. His jersey's grabbed and thrown down. Nice play by the BHS Drillers, and that's a good play by Mercy Maston. And that kind of just silences the Centennial crowd for a moment at least, for a moment. Well, it's, we just, it? it's just what the doctor ordered as you look here on the AV Plus Instant Replay. Maston, a great job of throwing down Sean Johnson. And Johnson took some medicine from his own man as well. A uh, big hit out there unintentionally by Tyler Thornton. So. Well, it's just what I said, Vance. They have to get him inside the 20, inside the 10, and that's where they are at the 10-yard line. So with 2.26 left, that's more than enough time for Kessler to go down the field. But against the way that BHS's defense is playing tonight, I don't know. All right, 2.26 remaining in this first half. The Golden Hawks trail by one, 13 to 14. They have 91 yards to get to pay dirt. Kessler wants to go up top, does go up top, and just overthrows his senior teammate, Timmy Martinez. Well, Kessler has been a bit off tonight. You know, he's he's overthrown a lot of his receivers. He's underthrown a lot of his receivers. But then again, his receivers haven't really been helping him out, you know, with those passes that have gone through the hands. But you see he has plenty of time in the backfield on the AV Plus instant replay. Well, the last thing he wants to do also is get it picked off. So he keeps it, keeps it safe, keeps it out of the reach of any uh, driller defender. Second and 10, Kessler hands the ball off to Johnson. And right now the drillers are thinking, hey, we might get the football back here. Well, I think that's exactly what they're thinking, Vance. You know, one thing their defense has done really well tonight is really much contain the, the uh, offense, the Centennial. If you think about it, it was a big-time kickoff return, short field. Then they got a uh, uh, fumble recovery, short field. So Centennial has not had the uh, hallmark drives or the big plays like we saw a, a few weeks ago. Now, defensively, the drillers are, are – changing up their, their coverage if, you, if we watch it throughout the game sometimes they're playing that hard man sometimes they're playing off sometimes mercy mass is floating up inside as like a robber type coverage so doing a lot of different things tonight that they did not do about a month ago second and uh third and ten another apa award and this goes to a very very talented receiver our APA receiver of the award Matt give it to us quickly well it's going to be Chris Brown the senior from Golden Valley you know even though he was ejected from a game earlier in the year he still managed to pick up 800 yards on the receiving end he's definitely one of the most athletic receivers to come out of you know this, this section and then of course out of Golden Valley they're a relatively young school van so Chris Brown the wide receiver winner of the 2010 APA award. APA award. We'll talk more about Chris if we get a chance. Kester in his own end zone. Kester, throw for a sack. Fumble! That's going to be an intentional grounding in the end zone. It's still going to count as a safety. Any, any offensive penalty in the end zone is a safety. The BHS crowd, they're trying to celebrate. They want to celebrate. They know they should be celebrating, but Alex Elidor, the top official there, and that's an intentional grounding, a uh, safety. So, wow, Brian, wow. BHS defense. Well, now they're trying to argue. The Centennial offense is trying to argue with the referee that there was a receiver that almost caught the ball. And let's see, well, I don't see anybody there. Maybe, no, that's definitely an offensive lineman that are down there. But well, a safety of all things put, makes it a field goal game, 16-13. Yeah, there are no offensive players down there, no offensive skill players, rather. There's just a bunch of linemen down there for Marcus Kessler. Wood and but, but that's the play right there. As Cody matures in his, quarter, in his quarterbacking, you won't see at the next level. Yeah. So you're not going to mess around. He's trying to make something happen. Right there, you got a sideline route. Just chuck it out of bounds over the guy's head on the sideline, and you go out and you punt. Can you imagine? That's, just, that's just the immaturity play on his part. But, you know, when a kid does everything else so great, right. you know, that's just part of the maturation pro progress, and he will mature with that. Can you imagine if that bounces off the back or a helmet of one of his players, remains in the air, and uh, ends up being a touchdown for the Drillers. So great point there. Matt, uh, Matt, what are you looking at? Well, Nixon was hot. Nixon was in, in the ear of Alex Eddie, but he doesn't have an argument. 
he, there's no argument there whatsoever. Kessler threw that ball. He intentionally grounded that ball inside the end zone. Look, he's still, he's still upset. And you see a great job of rushing the ball there by Gabriel Cardenas. And Kessler, there's no one there. Well, you see, I once think he turns his back, guys, and starts trying to make that miraculous play, he's done. Right. Because one, one thing he doesn't have an open field is the room to move when you're pinning that in that end zone like that. And then again, you have to just know Woo. that you want to get rid of the ball on that one. Again, like I said, you won't see that on him when we see him on ABC and ESPN and everything else in the years to come. You'll see a different play by him. Well, Coach Nixon hotted everybody, including his star quarterback, because now they've given up two points and have to punt the football or kick the football, either one, to the drillers. And so instead of an incomplete pass, it's now uh, a table-turning situation here where you have the drillers standing at their 30-yard line as far as uh, Mercy Maston. And let's not look past Mercy Maston. He's as dangerous as anybody, and he's going to get a running start at the 32-yard line. Mercy looking for some room. Picks up some good blocks. Has he's a got wall. A lane. Some more lane. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Mercy. Connie brought down at the... 43-yard line. Well, now, now you have to look at where the field position comes into play as they're at the 40-yard line, and they still have a minute 49 left. You see on the AV Plus instant replay, wow. man, those are some big hits going there on the far side. Then Madsen does a good job of keeping his feet, goes down the far sidelines, then cuts back to the inside. And watch this spin move at the very end of the play. I bet he's gassed right there. <laughs> I bet he's absolutely gassed no, near the 40-yard line. I, I doubt it. He's, he's, a, he's, he's young and in shape. See, you don't know about that, Matt. You were never young and in shape. You were young, but not See, in shape. you set yourself up, Matt. You set yourself up. First and 10 drillers. Hunt in motion, comes back and runs into a wall of trouble. And uh, <clears throat> the drillers have no timeout, so the clock will continue to tick. It's going to be all about time management to see if they can get their kicker uh, in at least field position for another three. What's his range, Matt? Well. The field goal kicker for BHS. Well, Campbell, you know, I'd say you'd have to get it somewhere near the 25-yard line for him to have a good shot of making it a 42-yard field goal. Burrell looking for some room. That's going to do a big chunk of it right there, and he gets to the 26-yard line. The only will stop the clock to move the chains as I hear my director, Bernie Johnson, echoing my brain. That's scary. He might as well just call a play and don't even take the chance on ground and just call the play and run something. Uh, a minute and a minute and ten seconds, especially from the 26-yard line where they're at. That's plenty of time. Nasidas stands right behind Burrell. A minute exactly left. Burrell hands the ball off to Nasidas. Nasidas claws his way for two or three yards. That clock continues to tick now. They've got to get up to the line of scrimmage, and that Centennial defense is going to have to dig in right now. It's a big, big stop if they can keep him from even kicking a field goal, let alone getting into the three and, God forbid, a touchdown. 16-13. Nasidas goes out to the right. Burrell throws this time. Oh, and it's fumbled. That's going to be an incomplete pass, Vance. Yeah, that's why I didn't do my patented fumble yell because uh, it looked like incomplete from the beginning. Well, Hannibal, sounds like he heard footsteps there on the near side of the field, and you see Burrell. That's a perfect pass to Hannibal, and all Hannibal has to do, oh, he turned to look. He turned to look before yes, he, he had the ball caught. He was thinking he was going to make somebody miss and make a big play, but he stopped the clock which might have been better than he didn't catch it and get tackled and, and lose a bunch more time. Well, there you go. Third and seven. Clock stop, as we talked about. Burrell looks, has a man open. Touchdown, Nasidas, BHS. Well, I'll tell you, you're watching Brian Burrell. We've seen him quite a few times, Vance, in our last three years of, of watching him play, and this is by far the best game I've seen him play. Well, you see on the AV Plus instant replay, Nasidas, no one on him up the middle. He comes up the middle from the backfield. The linebackers are already vacated the area. And BHS, big blue, up by nine here with a chance to go up by 10. Here's the PAT. The snap, the hold, the kick, and it's up and it's through. So. This will most certainly be the score that gets the oohs and ahs over at Garces when it's announced. And if the word gets up to the Valley at the Clovis West Stadium when this gets announced, as we see another perfect pass by Burrell, and the seat is just left wide open, absolutely wide open. 
how you had to think the, va the linebackers had vacated the area maybe off to cover the flats because the safety was definitely on the near side of the ball with the receivers and that left Nacito wide open so that shows a good deal of research being done by this BHS coaching staff and players to know Centennial's tendencies and that's definitely a tendency of Centennial you know, to bring Jared Norris on a blitz or to bring Bl Brody Scott on a blitz <clears throat> and that's why they're up by 10 here with 28 seconds left. Now, what a football game. Linebackers, Matt, so when they see that run action, their first instinct is to come up anyway. So you draw them up like that. And then also, what a blessing for the drillers that he that uh, the ball was dropped by Hannibal because that gave them a lot more time to have another play. So that, you know, some things had to go right. We talked about Liberty. But it's hard to beat a team twice, especially when the two teams are evenly matched. And tonight, you know, the drills just look different. There's everything about them. Their warm-up looked different today. They little, were out early. They just look different tonight. Little bit, a little bit of a quiet confidence, eh, Brian? Yes, sir. Well, it's not too quiet on the BHS sidelines, and it hasn't been for the first half, Vance. If you've looked over there, you've seen those guys bouncing up and down all night. So they're definitely pumped. They've been pumped since the opening kickoff, and that's why they're up by 10. Well, they're the most successful high school in the state of California history. You don't get that way by chance. Little eight iron pooch kicks can be taken on a fair catch. Fair catch at the 29 yard line. So some savvy play out there by Brody Scott. Waves everybody off and says, I'll take it right here. 20. No, we just get that way from playing football since 1711. <laughs> <laughs> so the drillers have been playing football before the United States was formed as a nation. Yeah. According to driller BHS icon, Brian Adams. No, we, we played a whole lot more games than anybody else around, though. Well, I understand your attempt at humility, but incredible program, and the Golden Hawks trying to stamp their name on a big, big win over that program as senior sensation Cody Kessler, number one quarterback in the state, now hands the ball off to Johnson. Johnson with some room. Johnson brought down at the 40-yard line. He's tackled on the play by number 20, Dominic Rutherford. Oh, Rutherford in on another defensive tackle here in the audiovisual plus instant replay. Rutherford actually trying to strip the ball as they go to the ground, and what better than to get a turnover here as we near the end of the uh, first half. Well, they don't even want to go to the air. Johnson runs it to about the 47-yard line, and they time out. It's called by Coach Nixon now. And so now Coach Nixon's going to go over. I'll tell you what, Coach Nixon is hot. He has been hot for a while, and he's one cool customer, so he is... Uh, really heated right now. We well, he cannot be happy with the execution of his offense so far right now. They've been off a little bit, like you said, on some passing plays. Uh, there's been some situations where the blocking has broken down. And they just haven't had a, a, a typical Centennial game that we usually see, limited mistakes, and then capitalizing on big plays. But the thing about them is they're in the game, they're only down 10 points, and you got a whole half to play, and you get the ball to start the game. All right, fi uh, final APA award we'll give out for the first half. Matt, I'm going to leave you to make the decision here on our punt. We discussed this all week long. You want to wait till after this play? No, I'll wait till after the play, Vance. We if, have 11 even if seconds we have left. Time, if we don't have time, they'll probably call a timeout. But um, second and five, Kessler. They stay on the ground. Johnson uh, is tackled about the 46-yard line, and will they call another timeout? Well, they got the first down, so oh, the okay. clock's going to stop anyway. And Nixon's a quarter of a way out to the football field. He's almost to the hash mark, so now it looks like they may just spike it here. Wow, we so they do spike it. All right, give us your APA for the punt. We're leaving kickers and punters up to you, and I'm sure you've got the great call. APA 2010 Punter of the Year. Well, I harped on him. We covered this team twice during the season, and he had great punts to not only corner Centennial and their upset win over the Golden Hawks, but if I'm going to give it to Liberty's Angel Mariscal. He's Angel a, Mariscal. He is a great punter. I, I've watched his form. He has great form. He knows exactly how to drop the ball, where to drop the ball, where to place punts. I'm giving it to Angel Mariscal, the 2010 APA punter of the year. Last play of the first half, and they just keep it on the ground. So timeout after timeout after timeout, and they keep it on the ground. And Sean Johnson takes some big hits to finish the half, so a puzzling finish. But 23 to 13 as the Driller faithful up cheering, and they are stoked. And the Centennial crowd below us wondering, call a lot of timeouts for three run plays, no shot at the end zone. And that means a 10-point lead for the Drillers as they go into halftime. We'll be back with the third quarter, Bright House Networks High School Football Game of the Week.
Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rental. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970. With Dan Patrick in the morning. And Jim Rome, 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports. It's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. Vance Palm alongside Matt Alvarez, Brian Adams down on the grass. Wow, that was a fun halftime. That was kind of halftime. Every three steps we took, Matt, somebody wanted to say hi, somebody wanted to shake hands, somebody wanted to weigh in on this exciting first half of football. The Drillers will kick off to start the third quarter. They're up by 10, 23 to 13. We've given out some APA awards in the first half. We have more to go in the second, but a puzzling 25 30 yard kick again, but I guess you just want to keep it out of Sean Johnson and Thomas Grimes' hands. But you give Ketzler the ball at the 30 yard line. Let's welcome back into the broadcast our captain Brian Adams. Captain, your thoughts on the first half? Well, I thought the drillers played exactly what they needed to do to, uh, uh, to get the upset tonight. They controlled the ball, they controlled the clock, they had a few mistakes, and defensively, they mixed it up, did a great job of keeping the vaunted Cody Kessler and company from making the big plays in the air game. Well, that Cody Kessler now comes back out on the field to start this third quarter. Sends Grimes into the slot. Sends Freeze right next to him at the tight end spot. Now Freeze is going to go back over to the other slot. And Johnson will now go in motion to his right. So a lot of activity to start off this first uh, play of the third quarter. Johnson has to stick his hand out and make a great catch. And now Johnson gets run out of bounds. And boy, that was a nice catch by Sean Johnson and Brian Nixon on the field as we have a flag on the play to start the third quarter. So Cody Kester looking over and, and there was so much activity before that ball was snapped that I, I almost wonder what was going on. And I think a flag shows us why. I don't think it was a false start, Vance. I think that they had five people in the backfield. You're only allowed four people in the backfield, everyone else has to be lined up on the line. They're going to call an illegal formation or illegal procedure call. So that big gain on that first down play to Sean Johnson out the far side of the field is going to be negated. Starting to get brisk, starting to get chilly, starting to get a little nippy now. So uh, this game will finish with a cold, cold night. Yes, so they go right back out to the right side. This is going to be Freeze. Freeze catches it, gets a yard or two. We're hearing scores. We're hearing scores from around the area. And uh, nothing's final yet. We still have a half of football, but we're hearing scores around the area that will kind of dictate and predicate where we are next week, if anywhere. But we'll let you know as the night unfolds. 23-13 is the score here as we begin the third quarter. Kessler all by himself. He goes out to his left side. This time is Sean Johnson. Sean Johnson, stiff arm, gets thrown out of bounds, and Matt you brought up the question in the second quarter. It's peculiar why he would have so much space and have nobody on him specifically. They do it again. Well, they do it again, like you said, Vance. But you know what? Look at Mercy Matson on the defensive end doing a great job having the stiff arm in his face and then able to throw Johnson out of bounds. So not a lot game, maybe about three or four yards. But if that was a third and three or four, that would have been a first down. But it's going to be a third and eight. 
big third down to start off a third quarter. Kessler looks to his right. Kessler in trouble, gets out of it. Now he's in more trouble, and Kessler's going to get hammered and thrown down at the 25-yard line. Big, big loss for the Golden Hawks, and the Driller faithful loving it. Oh, they got a lot of defensive pressure here, you see on the AV Plus instant replay. Centennial's offensive line breaking down for only the second or third time tonight, and BHS able to get through. It's the Rutherford brothers joining in on the tackle. Well, I'm assuming they're brothers. Dominic Rutherford and Donovan Rutherford, both seniors, both 5'8", 174, and 175, so. Fourth and 12, Kessler's gonna have to punt the football. It's an end over end punt, and uh, gets a nice bounce, and gets out at about the 42 yard line. So now the Drillers will start off the second half almost as if they'd received the kickoff because they have the ball at their own 42 yard line after a quick series from the Golden Hawks. All right, Coach Brian Adams slash Gola, what are you thinking here on offense, first set? Well, I'm just gonna do the same thing I've been doing. I'm not gonna do anything different because again, if I can keep those methodical drives and maybe if I bust a big one, a big run or a big pass play here and there intermittently, I can win this game. First and 10, Walter Hunt stands behind Burrell. Now Burrell's by himself, looks at Hunt. Burrell wants to throw across the body. Burrell decides to keep it, and Burrell goes down and gets about seven yards. Strung out the plate on the left side, didn't have anybody hung, hang on to, un, hung on to it, and goes down after about seven yards. Well, Burrell here on the AV Plus instant replay, you've seen him run to the left, like you said, Vance, and hangs onto it as long as he possibly can. But that just, that's a testament to the BHS offensive line or to the slowness of Centennial's defensive line because Burrell had so much time to make a decision, finally able to pick up five yards out of that. Second and five. Nasidis will stand in the slot. And Burrell fumbles! Fumbles! Our cameraman, Carlos Anguiano, on the ground says BHS. The Centennial Golden Hawks say Centennial. And it is, it is, okay. Crowd doesn't like it. Let's watch our audio-visual plus instant replay. Burrell had the football. It wasn't on the exchange or the fake. And um, don't really get a shot of it, but now that brings up a third and four. That's a big, costly fumble there as momentum was certainly in the driller's favor. Burrell drops back, goes to his right, wants to throw, throws one out, has his man over again. It's Nasita again. Nasita at the goal line, touchdown drillers. He gets behind the defense again. Oh my goodness, they let it happen again, Vance. Nasita uncovered over the middle. He had Jared Norris on him, but Norris couldn't catch up to Nasita. And you see Burrell with plenty of time in the pocket. He had Brody Scott coming on the backside, but the block was picked up and a perfect, perfectly thrown ball. BHS about to go up by 17 with this extra point. Parker Campbell will do the kicking. Hannibal the holder. It's up and it's through. 17 point lead, Captain Brian Adams. I guess Gola did the same thing they did in the last, in the first half. But I mean, we came out here about a month ago and we saw the Centennial players get wide open plays and the secondary from the drillers were, were discombobulated. Now we're seeing Centennial being discombobulated. And one thing we've talked about throughout the telecast is when you see a guy running by you and you're getting beat, just grab them in high school football, college football, and you're only going to get 15 yards. Don't let them score a touchdown. Now you put yourself in a hole of 17 nothing. And one thing about Golo's defense, you know, you're asking they're going to give up another 17 points and a half. Even with Cody Kessler, you're asking for a difficult assignment for your offense. You know, the Centennial defense has not played how we've seen them play throughout the year. You don't see them make these kind of miscues. That's the same exact play you got beat right before the half, and they come back and get it. So, again, like Matt said, give the drillers uh, offensive staff great credit. They did some film work. They found some adjustments in there, and, and they slipped in those big plays on them. Well, with 9.13 left to go, 30-13 to 13 drillers lead. Who would have thunk this, Vance? In the third quarter. In the third quarter. 17-point lead, so plenty of time for Kessler and company to come back. 
But who would have thunk this? And if you're a BHS fan, you're thinking, yeah, plenty of time for us to put some more points up on the board. We're the ones doing it. Well, if you're a BHS fan, you're saying to yourselves, we've known all along that we were capable of this. Well, well, well. When you have a quarterback like Cody Kessler, and a running back like Sean Johnson, and a coach like Brian Nixon on the other sideline, you're not going to catch me saying this thing's over. No dice. This a little bit deeper, and it's actually going to be taken this time at the 20-yard uh, line. And it's handled out there by Tyler Thornton. So Thornton goes down about the 27-yard line. But right now, the energy, the emotion, the amped-up bodies are most certainly in the blue and white. Well, guys, you better look for some ears to be pent back now by the driller front guys. They will bring the house now. Well, knowing how good of a rush they got on Kessler that last series. I mean, we haven't seen that a lot this game, but that last series, Cody Kessler showed that he was very vulnerable in the backfield, and this offensive line showed that they were vulnerable to let the BHS drillers through. Grimes in motion. Well, it's going to be time for Cody Kessler to step right right. Now, this time it's Sean Johnson. Johnson makes one move, two moves. Johnson's still on his feet. And that's a nice, big, strong run for a first down by Sean Johnson. And to think BHS almost shot themselves in the foot last possession when they fumbled the ball, but Burrell was able to jump back on top of it, or one of the drillers was able to jump back on top of it, and then they score the very next play. But, you know, you, it's BHS really has to pin their ears back, like Brian said. They weren't able to do it on that play, though, as Johnson bobbing and weaving, making his way for a first down. Kessler stands at his own 40. This, this went out to Grimes. Grimes catches it at the 47, drugged back to about the 46, but I think his forward progress will at least be up at the 48. The Golden Hawks, number two, seeding behind Clovis West, and the Drillers, the number three seeding. Johnson takes the handoff. Johnson, this time wrapped up, no gain there. Great job by David Price getting in there on the defensive end. Able to penetrate the gap and put Johnson down for no gain on the play. It looks like it's going to bring up a big down, big third down now. Coach Nixon had Cody Kessler over on the sidelines talking to him real quick. Just a very brief exchange between head coach and star quarterback. Under eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Third and seven. Cody Kessler barking out some new orders. He's got a triple set out to the right side. Has Doherty to the left side. Might go to Doherty. Kessler breaks a couple of tackles. Two tackles. Three tackles. Kessler on his feet. What a big play. The quarterback picks up a big first down, delivers a big blow, and gets knocked out of the 30-yard line. First down, Centennial. And a little bit of trash talking going on between Kessler and Chris Hannibal. Kessler tried to lower the shoulder. He got the first down at the end of the play, what but he play. tried to lower the shoulder and knock down Chris Hannibal, and Kessler got the raw end of that deal. You see, what a spin move. And then he has the speed to break free of Nasida on the outside. We'll watch this hit at the end of the play on the AV Plus Instant Replay. Boom! Kessler got the raw into that deal for sure, and Hannibal let him know it. First and 10. Had a chat with Mike Houston from Townsend Design. He says, yeah, we've got an e-brace on that young player out there named Kessler. So hello to you, Mike Houston. Kessler goes to the right side. And gets shoved out of bounds. Bodies going everywhere. Coaches flying down. It's on, baby. It's on. Well, guess who it was again that went into the BHS coaching staff over there. It looks like someone might be down over there on the far sideline. But it was Hannibal again. Hannibal trying to trying to knock Kessler out of this game for sure. Second and seven. 30 to 13. The Drillers lead. A pensive. Centennial Golden Hawk crowd. The only loss they've experienced this season has been to the Liberty Patriots in the Freedom Bowl. They kick this one out to Grimes. Grimes had a nice football game so far. He gets brought down about the 30-yard line. No gain. You know, right there, you look at Hannibal. That's exactly what you want your secondary guy to come up and do. He doesn't make the tackle, but he forces Grimes back into the flow of the game. And then Mercy Matson, who's going to clean everything up from that safety spot, this is going to wipe it all out. And it's a short gain there by Grimes. So now it's third and about eight or seven. Nice tackle by 
Van Horn out there. Was that Van Horn that came in to finish it up with I Mercy? It was Mercy Matson was down there for sure. All himself, all right. Third and seven. Kessler has Johnson standing to his left. Kessler gonna go to the air, kicks it out to Johnson. It's gonna be all about Johnson. And he does get the first down. What a big move, a great move. But a flag comes in late. And there were no blockers around that area, so if anything, it might have been a face mask. Well, you better hope that it wasn't a block on the deep offensive route by the wide receiver oh, that would boy. cause a holding. That would be. Oh, boy. No, nope. face mask. I'll tell see you guys, any, Johnson is single-handedly keeping this team in this game. You know, we haven't seen the big monster night from Cody Kessler, but Johnson is just straight, straight getting it done tonight. I mean, he's up here making Mercy Madison miss one-on-one, -on -one, probably one of the best defenders out here in Bakersfield. Well, the face mask was one of the unintentional grazes, but it was a first down, so they added a few more to it. Six and a half remaining in the third quarter. Here come the Golden Hawks. They're in the neighborhood for sure. Kessler going to go flushed out to his right. Kessler tosses one, and it's going to be picked off. That was a poor decision by Cody Kessler. Bad decision, and picking the ball off was number 25, Kyle Pope on the far sidelines. Oh, you know what? Check that, Vance, who was two, it? That's Elijah, number two. Elijah all over the intended receiver. Kessler tried to jam it in there, and Elijah steps right in front of the receiver, grabs it, and Grimes knows that it's picked off. Thomas Grimes' back is turned to the play, but already knows it's picked off, and what a stopper. You can't run a sideline route, guys, that long. It's just, it's just too long of a route to do. That's a quick hitter. You throw it on your, on your back step when you hit that fifth foot. The ball's got to be gone. That's the situation right there. He just runs it out, and he maybe scores. Burrell looking for some room, and he gets a little bit. Gets brought down at about the 11, 12-yard line. So now with a 17-point lead and 90 yards to go, I'm sure that Coach Gola is talking to his offensive coordinator and he's talking to his quarterback saying, fellas, let's work this clock. And that's just a simple case of Cody Kessler trying to make too much happen, Vance, on the far sidelines. But nonetheless, you got to let it go. Down by 17 here with 5.55 left to go in the third quarter. You got to pin yours back if you're the Centennial defense. Burrell has room, looks upfield, has a ton of room, still on his feet. He's at the 30. He gets brought down to the 37 yard line. 25 yard jaunt for B Square. Well, it's starting to get windy here at Centennial, and it's not just the BHS offense going by the Centennial defense. As you see Brian Burrell all of a sudden turning into a track star, cutting to the outside and picking up some blocks and then being hauled down there by Brody Brody Scott on the far sidelines, but BHS picks up another first down at the 35. As you see Sean Johnson looking in disarray on the Centennial bench. Burrell. It's going to be Burrell again. Takes a hard hit. And of course, it's Norris amongst Centennial Golden Hawks, as well as Zach Renfro that laid one on. And as you mentioned, Matt, it's going to get starting to get pretty chilly up here, as well as uh, Alex Zuby in on the plays. This clock now starts to race. If you're a Golden Hawk fan, you're sitting here watching that clock just scream. If you're a Driller fan, you want it to go even quicker. 17-point lead for Big Blue in all white. Hunt, the running back, he goes in motion to the left. Burrell takes a look, throws it out to Hunt. Hunt looking for some room, and he goes down after a gain of maybe a yard, a gain of maybe a yard. Oh, a good job by the Centennial defense to swarm over to the right side of the field. From their vantage point, you see Unable to pick up, maybe a yard, just swarmed there though. Good job by the Golden Hawks D. Force a long third down here. Wow. I told somebody I thought this game would finish with about 52, 53 degrees. Nope. Good thing I brought the jacket. Third and nine, huge third down for the Centennial defense. Massive play. Burrell looks, throws to his man, finds his man. And it's going to be a first down. Well, I say that from where he caught the ball, he was a yard past the marker. And of course, that is the sure-handed Silas Nasita. And it is a first down. So Silas Nasita has had a massive, massive game on the receiving end of things. 
Well, guys, we talked about Brian Burrell in the pregame. He had to be efficient, and that's exactly what he's done tonight. He has not thrown the ball too many times, but, you know, he's well over 60% on pass completion tonight with two big touchdowns. So he's done exactly what he needed to do tonight. He's guided this team. And, again, all the times we've been on, on Bright House, you know, you see all the other, we don't see all of the games, but the games we've done, this is by far his best game. Burrell going to tuck that ball in and get up to that big – C in the middle of the football field, and every time I look at that clock, boy, it's just big chunks of it are gone. 320 now remaining in the third quarter, and uh, that wind you're hearing in my microphone, I really can't stop it because it's coming straight from the south side, and my microphone's pointing towards the south side. Second and seven, and Richard Van Horn way out to the right side. At least he takes a defender out of the way if you're the drillers. And Burrell cuts up and he's up the middle. Burrell at the 40 yard line. So it's Brian and Matt, this is, it's not something very tricky. It's not as if he's making guys miss him, but he gets six, seven yards every time he goes up the middle, Brian. Well, you know, Vance, early in the game, he's getting two or three yards. Now as the defense is getting worn out. Remember too, the Centennial defense has been on the field a long time tonight. And so he's just wearing them out. He's just making a sharp cut, and he's just running straight ahead. And there's just no linebackers. And I don't know who, like I said, I don't know what the scheme is, but there's nobody assigned to him making the play. Two and a half remain in this third quarter. Burrell, he's going to run all the way. It's been a lot of Brian Burrell tonight. And in this drive right now, other than the one pass to Nasita and the one pass to Hunt, it's been all B squared. Yeah, Brian Burrell making it happen here on the AV Plus instant replay, just lowering the shoulder. Taking down number 42, Logan Kukuch. He's going to bring up a second and four, but it's kind of like you alluded to earlier, Vance. It's like VHS. Whenever they have a first down, they're able to make it second and four, second and three, second and five, and it's second and four right now. You see Burrell with Hunt in the backfield. They send Nasita in motion. Burrell pulls up, throws over the middle. It's caught. And it's going to be down inside the 20-yard line. And it's Gabriel Cardenas once again. So they're having trouble covering it over the middle, Vance. And had Cardenas cut back to the corner, it was over. You see on the AV Plus instant replay, I mean, there's just no, there's the, where's the secondary at for Centennial? They've been absent this whole game, at least over the middle portion of the field, not necessarily the deep portion, but over the middle portion of the field. That's where Centennial has been weak tonight. Walter Hunt now behind Burrell. Nasita in the slot on the right side. Van Horn way out to the right. Here comes Hannibal. They pitch it to Hannibal. Hannibal has a lot of room. Hannibal, a big run down to about the seven yard line. So it's going to be first and goal from the seven, BHS. And um, right now, Brian, this Centennial defense, they've got to come up with something. Well, they got to get a turnover now because you're talking about you for sure within three points. That's going to make it 20 points. And if you can't afford another touchdown, but you talked about the, the secondary, where they've been at, Matt, on that last pass play, that's what happens when you're running the ball successfully, you get one-on-one. One-on-one -on -one is what I want as a receiver, because I can get you on my back, run that little slant, and it's an easy pitch and catch. Fumble! And Burrell that time, nothing doing. He wasn't going to try to make a play out of that. This is crucial semi-final Valley Championship time. He just said, nope, I'm on that. Is Brian Adams on top of it tonight or what? I mean, everything that he says that needs to happen usually happens, except there, there wasn't a turnover there. But Burrell fortunately made the smart play and just jumped on the ball, like you said, Vance, instead of trying to make something of it. My friend, I've been witnessing that for many, many years from our captain, Brian Adams. He is prescient. He is, he's got ESP in. Second and 10 now. Nasita again in motion. Burrell decides to keep it and now it's going to bring, bring up a third and probably 10. Yeah, exactly, third and 10. Wow, it went from 50 degrees to about 35 degrees in a span of 10 minutes. Samsonite, where's the hot cocoa? Here comes the fourth quarter, fellas. All right, that's it. We'll be back with the fourth quarter, and we'll have three APA awards to give out. Top offensive, defensive, and player of the year. Drillers up by 17. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970. With Dan Patrick in the morning and Jim Rome 9 to noon. 
home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports, it's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. It's the most anticipated basketball season in recent history, and the biggest names in sports are teamed up. The NBA and TNT are bringing you the premier matchups every Thursday with sports' most entertaining studio crew. Chuck, Ernie, and Kenny, must-see TV. The game is different, and the stakes are higher. From rivalries renewed to rivalries anew, the stage is set for show-stopping drama. Kobe. Don't miss NBA on TNT Thursdays. The mic's already open. Everybody can hear me sniffle. <laughs> Birdie gives us the cue. Open and out just mic. Wait too late. Everybody in Kern County heard this. <laughs> well, it's one of those nights, though. I had it to put on the scarf. Chilly. To see Brian Adams triple layer down there, you know it's chilly. <laughs> hey, Vance, you know, a young buck here who just joined our crew this year. He's up. It's that cold you got to put on three. I used to wear nothing. He just not. He just doesn't know yet. Sammy Bowman in his polo and shorts. You're my hero, Sammy. Third and goal from the 10-yard line. Burrell, will he throw it? Will he run it in? He might have somebody come across the middle, and it's Nasita. Oh, and he couldn't get it to him, so incomplete. And the Centennial crowd, a big, huge sigh of relief. His receiving core followed him and went with him, but he couldn't connect. And you see Burrell here on the AV Plus instant replay looking to the right side, then flushed back to the left side. He tried to find Nasita, but Nasita was well covered there. Right, very good job. And it's better to throw that ball out of the back of the end zone and give your kicker Campbell a chance than throw an interception and waste a scoring opportunity. And if this goes through, if it goes through, it'll be a 20-point lead for the Drillers. Nobody saw that coming before this game started, except perhaps the VHS crew. High snap. And it is no good wide right. Well, a wasted scoring opportunity, something you definitely cannot have in the fourth quarter when you're up by any amount of points against this Centennial team. See Campbell getting a good kick away. I mean, that's, he just pushed it to the right. You know, I don't think the wind had much of an effect on it because the wind's blowing the opposite way. All right, first and 10, Centennial takes over. After a missed field goal by the Drillers, and wow, Brian, that's a that's a better than three. Not even a better than seven. That's a better than three victory. Oh yes, it is. You know Woo. now, Centennial they have to get some things going. I think they have to get into a better pace and, and get some rhythm going on their offense. They start things off going to the left side, and that's a big play right there. Oh my goodness, a big start to the fourth quarter, Michael Martins, and that's a 38-yard gain. That's huge. You see on the AV Plus instant replay, Michael Martins getting some good downfield blocking right there. Looked like Thomas Grimes putting the block and then chasing him down was Madston on the far side and throwing him out of bounds, but that was after a pretty big gain there. They put him on the 45-yard line. Oh, they, they marked him out at the, or down at the 44-yard line, so uh, we have an official's timeout, and that's going to give us an opportunity to present or will it? Not enough time to present our offensive APA award? No, it does not. Our next APA award will be one of the big three. Offensive player of the year, APA. First and 10, Kessler. A lot of time now. Kessler flushed out of the pocket. Kessler, his crowd saying, get rid of it. Throw it, he doesn't. I say that because I hear him below me. And he took a big hit there at the end of the play by number seven, Price, once again. You see Kessler. Starting to run out of time. He's starting to take a little bit too much time in the pocket. And he's getting his good blocks right there. But you see, finally, just runs out of options. He gets tackled at the legs. And then Price came in and gave him a shot in the upper body. So it's going to bring up a second and 15 after that sack. Kessler looks over to the left side, has a quick word with Michael Martins, one of his three or four top receivers that he's used all season long. Kessler 
Now he's in big trouble. Kester gets out of it as almost always. Now throws over to the left side and complete to Martins. They're gonna say incomplete. incomplete. Wow, what a dart by Kessler as he's in trouble, in under duress. Fires one out to the left side, but incomplete. But watch the evasiveness by Kessler Ooh, though. He was able to boy. get out of a stranglehold back there at the 30 yard line. That would have been a big loss for Centennial with 10.39 left here in the game. You see Kessler dropping back and he runs out of time. Evades the tackle there from Kyle Pope, then gets away from another tackler. And finally, like you said, Vance, that was just an absolute dart fired on the far side. It's gonna bring up a third and 14. Another big play for the Centennial offense. Kessler has options this time, throws it out, and a big, big catch out there by Thomas Grimes. And uh, there's the example that so many scouts and so many writers around the state and the county and the area have seen Cody Kessler. That's a big time throw, Brian. Well, it's a big time throw, but let's give the Lions some credit finally. They gave him time to throw a dart, and that's exactly what he did. This line right now has to suck it up. They're just getting out quick right now off the, off the edges, just like right there. Kessler, another completion. And that's Doherty this time, still on his feet. Doherty gets up to the 17, 15 yard line. Can't even bring him down yet. Wow. Well, it's the first time we've called his name tonight, Vance, and Doherty finding some room over the middle, able to pick up some good yardage. And like Brian said, this offense just needs to find a pace, and they're seeming to find it now with its no huddle offense all the way down to the 17 yard line now. They start the clock, 10 15 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Golden Hawks trail by 17. Kessler fires one out. This time it's going to be caught out there by Martinez. Boy, and Kessler took a shot after throwing that ball. Vance barely pulling himself off the ground right now, looking at the referee, Alex Edior. Ooh, this final quarter shaping up to be dramatic. You see a catch made on the far side by Martinez, and then a good job over there, defensive pursuit by Cardenas. Able to limit the yardage gain. Going to be a second and nine. 9.43. The clock continues to tick. Martinez, Freeze, Grimes, everybody way out to the right side. Dory, the sophomore, over to the left side. Johnson stands right next to Kessler as Kessler barks out an audible. Kessler drops back, and the whistle blows before the play is called. And head coach Paul Gola for the drillers takes a timeout. And that most certainly will give us time to now talk about our offensive APA award. Brian, myself, and Matt, the Adams Palm Alvarez Awards, complete agreement with this. And there's this is a category where there's a lot of discussion, a lot of discussion. Would it be Jalen Sykes in his record-setting year? Would it be uh, Derek Martins, the quarterback for Golden Valley? Would it be even Would it be DJ Martin? Could it be DJ Martin? Right. Could it be Cheatham at Wasco? But the 2010 APA Offensive Player of the Year, Matt, 2010 APA Offensive Player of the Year, Vance, none other than the senior running back from Liberty, Carson Moyer. I mean, the man just controlled the Liberty offense. They asked him to carry the ball, what was it, 80% of the time. He ended up the season with 1,928 yards, which led the, uh, the county. I mean, he was an all-everything running back for Liberty this year. Really, it was a tough choice to make, but I think Carson Moyer definitely, he's worthy of that award. Kessler on a second and seven, in trouble, tripped up and dropped for a loss of five yards. Carson Moyer, the Offensive Player of the Year for the APA Awards and Bright House Networks as we see Kessler in trouble right here, tries to get loose, but he's snagged and brought down out there at the last second and actually thrown for a loss. Third and 12, third and 12. Kessler! Flag on the play, what will the call be? Thrown for a big loss, but you never know now. That was a lot of holding going on, Vance. I saw a lot of offensive holding, and that's exactly what it's gonna be called, so they're gonna oh, decline that. Boy. You don't lie about that, Mateo. They, they could have picked the lineman on that one. Well, Brian, you said it. They're gonna pin their ears back, this defensive front for the drillers, and... They're in four down territory now. There's no doubt about it. Nine minutes and two seconds remaining, and now there is going to be a timeout on the field called by, or is it, or is Nixon? No, Nixon, sorry. He comes so far out on the field that you think it's a timeout. He just wanted to give Kessler and Johnson a quick little word. Fourth and 20, 8.54 left 
in regulation play. They trail by 17. Johnson stands about four yards to the right side of Kessler. Grimes, Freeze, Martinez to the right side. Does Kessler have enough time? Goes to the end zone, has a man. Dropped. This Incomplete. Stayed with the throw, he stayed with the play. Incomplete. The Centennial crowd erupted as if it was a touchdown. But as Brian said, the defender stayed with it, and it's incomplete. We'll get the look right now. Well, Martins, I believe the ball fell to the turf. You'll see here, Martins catches the ball, and I think as he hit the ground, the ball came loose, but right there. Oh, incredible camera work down there. I think he was out of bounds more than anything, so be that as it may, the drillers now take over with 17 points to cushion this clock management right now as Burrell, fumble! Ooh, no, Centennial saying it's theirs. Boy, that's... The official has two fingers okay. up, so I'm gonna tell you whose ball it is. Ooh, 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 ooh. And now some very, very nervous Centennial Golden Hawks as we see the star quarterback, Cody Kessler, below us walking, pacing the sidelines. Surprised to see a lot of these fans packing up their stuff. Goodness gracious, Golden Hawk fans. California, baby, it's California. Out. This is how you do in California sports, Matt. Hard count by Burrell gets a Golden Hawk defense to jump, and we're starting to see the Golden Hawks crowd spread out now. Hard count, and Burrell points up and says, hey, we'll take those five yards. Eight minutes exactly. We still have our Defensive Player of the Year for APA and our MVP APA award to hand out. Under eight minutes to go here. And our best play, Vance. And our best play. Our best play, I think. <laughs> you, if you don't know our best play. <laughs> I think Zach Ewing let us all know what the best play of the season was. All right. Burrell on a second and three. Might go for a hard count again. Nope. Hands the ball off and on a play like this, you just get to see that clock grind away, grind away, grind away. Seven and a half remaining. And I think a lot of these people are thinking, you know what, I just want to get in my car and get out of here. It's freezing and I want to get home, but. Be the first out of this jam-packed parking lot. They're just helping us get out of here early, faster after the game is over. 7-12 and counting the drillers not have this in the bag, but with that clock racing as it does. Burrell, he's gonna cut up field and stay right in the middle of the football field. That's gonna be close to a first down Ooh, there boy. at the 37. Did he get it? They have the fourth down sign up, so they're not even measuring it, so they must not even think it's close. Well, will BH, they, BHS, they if they go for it here, they can really put a dagger in the hearts of Centennial if they go for it and make it but that's also a high risk, high reward. Well, as Brian so fondly refers to Coach Gola as the Bill Belichick of the area, probably will go for it. I mean, we, we've been watching him now for the last few years, man, and he's done this. I mean, he has great confidence in his defense, and right now his defense is playing so well right. that I, I, I can't see him not taking a chance or at least really thinking about it. All right, well, that perfect timing. We are now going to announce the 2010 APA award winner for the defensive player of the year. And um, <clears throat> I'll take a break, I'll give one, I'll, give, I'll do one. I'll, I'll, I'll do this one and we'll let Brian do the most valuable player and then we'll let you do play of the uh, play of the year. Got when I uh, talk about the defensive player of the year for the APA, you go to the uh, stat books and start looking at it and it gets to be ridiculous. 158 total tackles. 98 solo tackles, average nearly 15 tackles a game. The next closest solo tackler in the area is 70 solo tackles behind him. A runaway leader for Defensive Player of the Year and our APA Defensive Player of the Year, Grant Campbell, the senior for Garces. Grant Campbell, the APA Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, not a bad punt by Nasita. The ball will bounce out of bounds uh, at about the 24-yard line. So, Grant Campbell, congratulations. We only had one Garces game this year, the Holy Bowl. And uh, you know one thing about Grant, he 
probably tonight will rack up his 1,000-yard rushing and his 20th touchdown with zero fumble. So Grant Campbell, APA defensive player for our offensive player of the year. We have one more APA player of the year, and it's our MVP player of the year. And we've had him on a few times <laughs> this season. And Brian will make that call here in a few moments. Here we go. The Centennial Golden Hawks with six minutes and 10 seconds have a lot of magic. They need to work right now. The man to do it is Cody Kester. He goes to his right side. He rolls out. He's under duress. He throws it up, and it's caught. What a pass and what a catch. And who else but Timmy Martinez and Kester hammered at the 10-yard line, and he gets up, and his right arm wrist is sore. Look at this. He gets pummeled and thrown into the grass. We don't see it there, but what a pass and what a catch by Martinez. Well, another high risk, high reward play by Kevin Elijah, who came up with an interception in the last quarter. Elijah tried to jump up in the air, and he jumped as high as he possibly could, but it just got over his fingertips, and Tim Martinez able to get a fortuitous catch. First and 10, under, fumble, fumble, fumble! Well, you talked about Kessler's arm. That could have possibly played into that. That could have been a huge factor. Kessler, his right arm still, you can see on the shot right there, his right arm not moving very much. His arm has just been dangling, his right hand, his right arm. I don't know what it is at the wrist, the elbow, the arm. Um, we'll probably have to see what took place there, but that is a huge, huge nail in the proverbial coffin there. Well, it hit Sean Johnson's uh, side. I don't know if they were trying to fake it or if he was trying to hand it off, but it was just definitely miscommunication on those two. Uh-oh. And now the drillers will keep it right in the middle of the football field. 537 remaining in regulation. And now the Centennial crowd racing to the exits. I'm sure the faithful and the family members and the coaching staff will stick around and hopefully pay their thanks and their tribute. We have a driller down right now. Brian, why don't we take this time to announce our APA 2010 most valuable player. He has pretty much been the subject of a very, very positive and historic, momentous media blitz all season long. He's brought a lot of attention to the Valley and to Kern County, and uh, looks like he's gonna walk out of here with a loss tonight, but please, Brian, present us with the 2010 APA MVP award. Well, Vance, you know, he's gonna win many awards, so, you know, the APA may not be the highlight on his trophy <laughs> show. However, you know, Cody Kessler's just been immaculate throughout the season. You know, unfortunately for, for, for Cody, you know, he's not gonna get a win tonight and have a chance to win that Valley title. I know he, most, he really covets but he's played well. His parents have done all the things right from since he's a freshman to now, from the academic standpoint to just being a good person. And then the player he's become on the field, going to the camps and, and getting his name out there. You know, he's going to win every award you can possibly want to win as a high school quarterback, as a high school athlete for the sport. And he's going to just basically uh, dominate the scene in the state of California. Uh, not looking forward to him to be in the Trojan and beating up on my Bruins, <laughs> but you know he's going to be there. We wish him the best, wish his family the best, and we're going to miss him. And uh, good luck in, in your next endeavor, Cody. Well done, Brian. Thank you. I had a quick chat with Cody before the game, and I said, Cody, more than anything, I'm so impressed with you as a young man. Thank you for representing our community so well on the national stage. Second and eight. Right now, the drillers don't want to hear it. Burrell on a keeper himself. Burrell. Squirts his way up to about the 30-yard line. And Matt? In the bigger picture, Van, Silas Nasita just went off really tenderly. I mean, that could play huge into BHS's next week match against either Clovis or Clovis West. So I wonder if we could get an update on uh, Silas Nasita on the far side of the ball. But he was definitely favoring one of his legs. Third and four. Burrell on a keeper. Burrell picks up the first down. And not only are they in the neighborhood, that'll probably just about do it right there. 
never know. You never know. But with 428, first and 10 from the Golden Hawks 23 yard line, 30 to 13, the Drillers in full command of this semifinal championship game. Well, they're going to be letting the play clock run down to at least two or one every single play. You can believe that. And they're going to keep the ball on the ground. That's a definite. Well, they'll be playing next week. That's no doubt about it. I mean, there's nothing's going to happen in the next four minutes. It's going to come up with 17 points. So, you know, the Drillers have played a great game. Give the, the other offensive court staff, offensive people, great credit for what they came in with their game plan against Centennial, whose defense has been stout all year long. And the uh, defense for the Drillers made some things that did some things a little bit different. They played soft at times. They played hard at times. They mixed it up. They did a great job of using their quickness against the size of Centennial. And that's what they really did offensively, defensively from the front, is they were able to come off those edges and just put too much pressure on Cody Kessler most of the night. Second and two. Thank you, Brian. Burrell has the usual suspects surrounding him. And Burrell is just going to get in the stall mode right there, and he'll just go down. Yeah, smart play. Smart play by Burrell just to go down there with 320 left to go. I mean, there's no, no reason to risk getting injured trying to go through the middle of the pile there. Well, Matt, APA 2010 will close it off with the play of the year. So after this play, I will have you describe the APA 2010 play of the year. Oh, and award. it was a big one. Third and five, under three minutes remaining here. The Drillers looking to go into the championship game up north. They'll go up north unless an unbelievable win by Clovis took place. We don't know. And Hunt picks up the first down. So while they move the chains, tell us about the APA 2010 play of the year. Well, the date, November 5th, the site, Liberty High School. Centennial number one in the Valley, number seven in the state, taking on the Liberty Patriots. Liberty was down 13 to 19. In the final play of the game, Cody Renz finds Carson Moyer after running east and west for miles, it seemed like, a play that took somewhere around 15 seconds to develop. Cody Renz finding Carson Moyer wide open on the far side of the end zone for the touchdown and the upset win over the Centennial Golden Hawks. The Liberty Patriots, Carson Moyer. Cody Renz to Carson Moyer, the 2010 APA Play of the Year. All right, Matt. That was beautiful. Thank you, bro. I was reliving it in my brain as you were talking about it. Well, BHS now, the story of the night, a first and goal from the one. And now, Brian, this will be a score that pretty much accentuates a really, really positive night for Coach Goal and his drillers if they get in here. Well, you know, I can see that looks like they might just be taking a knee right here. They've gotten a formation like that, but they may not. And Burrell scores again, so. They go in. Great Drillers go crazy. They go in. You better believe that this is going to rattle some nerves up north, Vance. That this score, 37 to 13 pending this extra point, you better believe that that is going to widen some eyes up north. Don't you have any of your cronies that can give us a score? You know what, let me, let me text Corey Costello. Corey would know. Look at this. The Drillers in control. And the extra point is up and good by Parker Griffith. BHS 37 Centennial 13. One forty six remaining in regulation as we see Brian Burrell on the play to set up the one yard touchdown run. Almost got it in right there. And the driller faithful are enjoying life. Well, one of our great sponsors this season also was involved in giving us a great new promotion. It's been the Crab Crush. We call it the Crab Crush all year. And there's been a lot of controversy with the Crab Crush, but not tonight. Matt, the Crab Crush of tonight's the big Crab historic game Crush is. The Hit of the Week. Brought to you by 1061 Crab Radio. And tonight's Crab Radio Crab Crush of the Week comes courtesy of 
Well, let me give you the play call here as Cody Kessler running to the left side and he gets dragged down. Boom. Oh, there you the go. The Rutherford brothers. Dominic Rutherford and Donovan Rutherford combine for this week's Crab Crush of the Week. Back to you, Vance. Hey, what's your first clue, that, what's your first clue, Kern County, that we have no idea what the actual Crab Crush is until they play it? <laughs> Matt's having to figure out exactly what it is, but Rutherford with the Crab Crush. Dominic Rutherford with the Crab Crush. Well, they both combine. Wow, look at this. Crush. Corey Costello tells me 1914 Clovis West late in the game, so that's not over yet. Man, oh man, can you imagine if the Drillers have a Valley Championship game at home? Sean Johnson! Sean Johnson! Sean Johnson! Johnson trying to get to the end zone. Wow, a little bit too late. He's exciting to watch. Be fun to see where he ends up next year. Ooh, boy. And I would be surprised if nobody picks him up. I mean, there was chatter that he was getting going to get picked up by Fresno State. And boy, would Pat Hill love to have this guy. But if he doesn't, he ends up at BC. Boy, that would be that would be fun to watch. We're starting to, we're starting to get some of the letters that are starting to arrive to some of these players. I heard through the grapevine that Grant Campbell just received a letter from University of Texas. So the Longhorns looking at Grant Campbell. Now the letter's starting to roll in here. First and 10. Kessler has a lot of time. Love to get on the scoreboard here if they can. Kessler, and it's a touchdown. Touchdown. Never say die. Well, Michael Martin's deep in the back of the end zone. When you have that much time to throw the ball, you better believe you're going to have a wide receiver open. And Cody Kessler able to find Martins in the back of the end zone on the far side of the field. And it's about to be 37 to 20 pending this extra point here. But then again, this extra point hasn't been automatic for Williams and the Centennial Special Teams unit tonight. Snap the hole, the kick, it's up. And that one's good. So the Centennial stand starting to thin out pretty heavily, but nobody leaving the BHS side as they traveled over the west side tonight. Another look at Cody Kessler, possibly the last look we'll see of him in a Golden Hawks uniform. And how appropriate the last play we see is a touchdown pass. How appropriate if that's the last time we see Kessler for all of the highlights that he's brought to Kern County over the last three years and uh, the national attention that he's brought to our community and done such a fabulous job on that stage. The last time we see him in that uniform throwing a toss was across the body in the corner of the end zone. So congratulations to all of our APA winners, appreciate it. We do not have a confirmation yet on whether or not you will be privileged and <laughs> so honored <laughs> to have <laughs> Myself, Matt, and Brian are back next week. Obviously, we're being facetious, but we uh, we don't know. We don't know if we're going to be back yet. We don't know if we're if it's if it's way up in the valley. We won't travel. It's a possibility. Maybe there's a game at Garces. Maybe there's a game at Tehachapi. Maybe there's a game at Ridgeview. Don't know the scores yet. People not getting back to us. Maybe it's too uptight. Maybe they're too tense. A wigwam and a teepee. I'd rather stay out of Tashby if I could. What are you talking about? I don't, I, don't have any, I don't have any winter clothes. Well, for the record books, this has been a doozy. What a nice game. Well, they're lining up like it's going to be a regular kick, but I can guarantee you this is going to be an onside. Well, not guarantee, but. Guarantee? A guarantee? I have a good feeling it will be. There you go. Oh, recovered by the Golden Hawks. That's how it's done. The kicker. How beautiful was that? How that's how beautiful it, was that? That's how it's drawn up, Vance. You get behind your blockers. Guys thinking? Exactly. I, I really don't know what they're doing. That was just perfect. What a perfect kick. Christian Williams says, all right, all you guys just keep running. I'll fall on it. Uh-oh. I guess that's not the last time we'll see Cody Kessler throw a pass for the Golden Hawks. Well, 17 points in a minute and 16 seconds as a timeout being called. Officials timeout. Hey, Vance, you have to see the uh, film of our game, the alumni game up in Taft. I did the exact same thing. You did? Yeah. Is that the play you got hurt on? 
No, no, I got hurt on the snap that went over my head. Brian, come on. Hey. <laughs> no, Brian, Brian, stay out of it, Brian. No, stay out of it. If I wouldn't have said it, he would have. <laughs> I couldn't even get it out of my mouth fast enough, man. Woo. Did you notice that <gasps> Matt said we need to see the film of it? Did they do that in what? 30M? Here we go. We go to Sean Johnson. Johnson in trouble and uh, doesn't get out of bounds. And Sean Johnson steps up a little gingerly. Coach Nixon wants to coach this thing down at the end, wants to play this thing down at the end. Now you see Johnson just in the flats and not a lot doing there, especially with time running out here, 55 seconds left. You know, Centennial has all three timeouts. They can afford to burn one now. I don't know why they're not. Nixon watches his quarterback throwing out to Grimes. Grimes does not get out of bounds either. I'll tell you guys, I'm watching this uh, Elijah kid. He is a very good corner. You know, he's really coming to his own. He had a good game against Liberty. Watch him here tonight. He's done a great job of covering and locking up guys, a sure tackler. He said he's a little of a risk taker, but he's had a great game tonight. Well, uh, Coach Nixon opting not to go with the timeouts. Down by 17. Kessler drops back. Kessler stands in the pocket. Kessler fires another one. This time it's caught out there by Martinez. Martinez makes a couple of nice nifty moves. He gets brought down the 30-yard line. The clock will stop long enough to move the chains. Well, it's a three-possession game right now That's with it. eight seconds That's left. That's it. It's over. The BHS Drillers will move on to the Valley Championship. Now, I don't know if it's yeah, over I, just I yet. I don't know how it can be over. I don't see how they didn't stop. Alex Edior is motioning to everyone to go back to the sideline, so it's not over by his count, and he's the only guy that matters. Well, the, the, the maybe clock maybe the Centennial operator. Clock man just like, the season's over. Let's let it go. Just roll it out, fella. Roll it out. And now Centennial called the timeout. Brian Nixon looked up to the scores table up here, up to the press box, wait, pointed wait. to someone. I, I was as shocked as anybody. I mean, you see Timmy Martinez go down with seven seconds left, so you know, they have to move the clock. I mean, they've got to move the chain, so I'm just wondering what was going on. Uh, but they let it run out. Players came in. I'm yelling, that's it. But really, one more play. So I guess everybody will get one last chance to see the Golden Hawks on offense and one last chance to see the Drillers on defense before the Drillers either host a game at home or go up 99 to play Clovis West. And we'll see Cody Kessler probably pitch the ball one more time. And we will stay here for just a minute at least. I want to get some closing thoughts from Brian, some closing thoughts from Matt before we wrap this baby up because you never know, this might be our last time on the air this year. Cody Kessler drops back. Kessler flushed out of the pocket. Kessler, he's going to run the ball for his last play as a Golden Hawk, and that does it, everybody. It's over. The Drillers won a huge semifinal game. They upset the number two team in the Valley, and they win this big game in the second version of it. Look at these drillers. They are absolutely thrilled with this big victory. The crowd letting them hear it, and here comes the handshakes, 37 to 20. That last score by the Golden Hawks made it somewhat respectable. I'll start with you, Captain Brian Adams. Your drillers come through. Why don't you wrap up your thoughts about this season and tonight's game? Well, fans, we'll talk about tonight's game. Give the drillers uh, excellent credit for having a good game plan. They've stayed with it, and they were able to get a victory. You know, they had to get ready for next week and try to bring another championship home to driller land. Now, over this season, it was just an incredible season. You know, fans, we've been talking back and forth, and I'll tell you, it's been one of the better seasons that I've had in my 13 years, just from the crew, the, the, uh, the, the announcing crew as well, and just the games we picked. For the most part, we've had great games, and just the level of, of players we've seen this year who are going to go on to play college. We haven't had a season with this many guys at the collegiate level. It's just an excellent, excellent season, and I'm just thankful and, and, and blessed by God to have the opportunity to share this with you guys. Captain, I'm going to let you go so you can start doing some hellos. We love you, buddy. Thank you. Great job, and uh, good luck tomorrow for those Bruins. Brian Adams, everybody, his 13th season with us, the captain himself. Well, Matt, no longer do we throw the rookie tag at you. You're off the snide. No more rookie business. What a fabulous job you've done this year, Mateo, creating the homework for us, doing the homework for us, bringing the stats to the game, knowing the players, knowing the coaches. You've just done an unbelievable job, and any accolades that you get from anybody, you deserve it. Give us your thoughts on tonight's game and then the season. 
Well, BHS, you know, we talked about coming into the game that BHS had to limit the big play opportunities for Centennial, and that's exactly what they did. Centennial never got that long pass over the middle. They never got the long run by Sean Johnson. They had to chop it up into a you know, little 10, 15 yard pass plays, and that wore out the offense. And then BHS's offense was on the field so long that Cody Kessler wasn't able to do anything you know, uh, offensively for Centennial. So, you know, but like Brian said, BHS has to reload, regroup, go out and fight next week to try to bring a championship back to Griffith Field. But, you know, in the, the season in general, I'm very impressed with what I saw here, uh, you know, through, through Kern County. There's some great football being played. There's some great athletes coming out of Kern County. You know, we're going to see a lot of these guys playing on Saturdays and possibly some of them playing on Sundays, Vance. As we see Coach Gola getting tons and tons of congratulations by everybody, athletic directors, everybody involved, and Mateo. You know, and I just want to give a big thank you to Brian Adams. You know, if this is our last game tonight, where would I be without that phone call that I made to Brian in the summer asking him if he needed another guy on the broadcast crew for Bright House Networks? I concur. Well, I'll wrap up tonight's game with uh, a thought of <sighs> destiny. And I think everyone would probably just think that was destiny for the Golden Hawks and, and Cody Kessler to make this triumphant run to a Valley Championship to cap off uh, his brilliant career. But it was a team of destiny tonight in the Drillers that come back and make adjustments. And after that loss to Centennial, uh, they just barnstormed through the rest of their games and just blew people up. And Brian Burrell, what a great game for him. And his future is just unlimited as well. Coach Gola, again, fantastic win for the Drillers. As far as the season concerned, for a guy like me, I'm the luckiest cat in town. I get to work with such fine people. Our director, Bernie Johnson, the senior director, the godfather, Zachary Flores, not with us tonight because he's at his class reunion. Kevin Willie, uh, Edward Dick, uh, Tony Ombris. We've got Mark up here with us. Carlos down on the field. Super Sammy. Uh, the Bowman brothers, <laughs> to, to be sp uh, specific. Everybody that's been involved with us, we appreciate it so much. Jonathan, thank you. We bring all this to the table because we don't know. We don't know if we'll be with you next week. If we are with you this week, then I take back everything I said about all these guys. <laughs> On behalf of our director, Bernie Johnson, and the chief in command at Bright House Networks, Darren Brown, thank you for this great opportunity. Have a great, great holiday season. If we are with you next week, it'll be uh, an extra blessing to be with you. There's Coach Gola. We feel like he does. We've had a great season with you. Good night. God bless. Get in the game. The Friday Night Blitz is on. Friday Football Extra. And it's a complete football package on Sunday night after the NFL. FFX Sunday Night Edition. All the scores, all the highlights, all the stories from the gridiron. Coverage of your favorite school, plus the FFX Game of the Week. Friday Football Extra. FFX, the Sunday Night Edition, only on 17 News after Sunday Night Football. Local football action. Get in the game. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970. With Dan Patrick in the morning and Jim Rome 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports. It's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road, or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rentals. Football season's here and I've been waiting.